Hello again. Hello, guys. Welcome back. What up? I just, wanna, I just want to apologize for my appearance. Um, we I came here through a storm just to record, but now I'm all wet. Um, yeah. I, I just wanted to get that out of the way. You didn't deserve that. Were you one of those people, like, do you think I that do, people are thinking what you're thinking? Like, nobody looked at you and thought, oh my God, Reggie looks wet. I feel like, I don't know. Nice. My shirt is wet, my hair is wet. I just wanted to apologize for my, my appearance, guys. <laughs> Yo, and <laughs> most of our listeners <laughs> tap in, like, audibly. Oh. So I don't even know. If, no, I, like, I appreciate you like getting ahead of it though. For the YouTube case. listener, and my feet, my my shoes are soggy. I don't want them to be like, yo, she has soggy feet. I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah. I feel bad for you. I feel like I wish rain wasn't necessary. Is it what? necessary? It's so Reggie, the flowers, the plants. Ah, oh. hello. We need the rain. It's the rain cycle. You need the, the rain, rain cycle. cycle. Yeah, oh. I hate the rain though. Why do you hate the rain? It's such an inconvenience. You smell like wet dog. Uh -huh. your, your feet get wet. You put on an outfit. He's just subtweeting me right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm sneaking this <laughs> Yeah, man. You got on clothes. You feel like shit. You don't even feel like yourself once you get rained on. Do you like the summer? Are you a summer person? Nah, I've realized that this summer that I am a fall guy. It has been terrible. I feel like yeah. it's like a swing pool outside. Yeah, oh, nasty. my God. It's nasty. This summer hasn't been that bad. July 2024. I'm a commuter. I'm a commuter though, so it's terrible. Yes, like the subway. Me too. Yeah. You're commuting yeah. and you're like, dog, I've been sweating my outfit out. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. As you get older, the things that you used to love, you realize you hate. Like yeah. the summer? Summers, I don't really care for them. The only good thing about the summer is there's not as much traffic on the street. Oh, really? No, not yeah. at all. Because half the population is com uh, commuting to school. There's like teachers, oh. there's buses, everybody's always fighting that, that traffic. So, there's no traffic and one of the other things when you're younger you really really look forward to it. it's like oh my god i need this to happen every single winter which is a snow day <laughs> nobody wants snow days as an adult that's a fact because there's shit that comes with it oh, and so yeah. all of the things that i used to love when i was a kid mm -hmm. i've gotten older and i'm like yo i despise it no it's true summer and rain no rain is not one of those things though i appreciate rain do you i do what? You sad no, ass nigga. I don't know because you're the one that said last month that you don't believe in umbrellas. I don't. <laughs> I, but I like I don't. So you just it. embrace the rain. Is what yeah, you're just saying. appreciate it. So you get what? rain on, fuck it. It don't matter. Really? My co my coworker, he says his favorite weather is this type of weather, like a storm or rain, because he says, and he was being genuine. He wasn't trying to be funny. He was like, because you have to make your own happiness. When the weather is uh, bad, he's too deep for me. When the weather is bad outside, so he—that's why he loves the rain. Reggie, oh <laughs> my God! Well, let me start with this, and then we'll get into the podcast. Reggie, I do want to apologize to you again. Oh my gosh! Wow. Because last week on the pod, yeah, we spoke, and as y'all know, there's a lot of bleeps. Some people were complaining about the bleeps, but the bleeps are not for you. The bleeps are for me, guys. I'm <laughs> yeah, protecting. Yeah, I'm protecting myself <laughs> when we bleep certain things. I say really, really inappropriate things sometimes. I say the things that really come to my head. I say the things like, if the cameras weren't on, mm -hmm. I still say those things on camera and on mic. Mm -hmm. I'm not always mindful that it's not just me on the pod. Mm -hmm. So I'll say something that could be really, really offensive. And just because I'm <laughs> saying it, what? What? <laughs> no, no, no. This is great. Like, no, legit, this is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I'm saying it, I think it only pertains to me. Or because I'm not <laughs> offending you guys like yeah, yeah. directly. I'm like, oh, that's uh -huh. cool. But I learned something like really valuable <laughs> last week. <laughs> By, like, I have to keep my thoughts to myself. Even no, on a podcast. It's a podcast. Is, not all of them. This, this, why, this is why I never complain that I'm offended because of shit like this. Because if I complain, like, oh my mm. God, that was offensive. No, then, it's not complaining. Then say, I'll be like, fine, I just won't express myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're such an extremist. <laughs> no, because what she just said, right? Yeah. She described yeah. her co worker. Mm. And mm. if you give me permission to say what I was thinking, then. Oh my God. Fine. Can I, can I say what I want to say? I don't know what you're about to say. Exactly. See, this is why <laughs> I can't call say. Him gay. Yes! Oh my god! No. Yes. Honestly, no. honestly, it's not like the gay stuff that bothers me because I don't know. People people are like, oh my god, I don't that's just I can't fix any of that. It's yeah. about the women stuff. That's when I'll be like, guys. I didn't do this that last too week. Much. Last week it was some gotcha. gay shit I said. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's gay for loving rain? The way he expresses nah, he's just, for the he's, rain. He's too passionate <laughs> yeah. about rain. Why he that passionate about rain? Oh my god, I hope he knows. Oh, you get to this. really just do your thing. What do Armand you knows what I'm talking about. That's so crazy. Shout out to Armand. And man. shout out to him and yes. the gays. Yeah. Like shout out to everybody. Sh Honestly, shout out to the gays. For sure. For sure. Shout, shout out, out to, to the, the Democrats. We're gonna do this this November. <laughs> shout out to everybody that's gonna do right. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do want to apologize. I did want to start with that. Okay. Yes. Um, we apologize to all the gays. Yeah. And anyone we've ever uh, yeah. offended. <laughs> 
<laughs> and speaking of offending people, we're going to offend everybody with how much fun we're going to have mm. a week from now at our 2024 Need to Know Mixer. It's a three-peat year. Hello. Three is a lucky number. You know, third time's a charm. On August 17th, we're going to throw the party of... Not even the... We've been saying... We've been marketing it incorrectly, guys. We've been saying party of the summer. It's party of the year. Hello. The Need to Know Mixer, beautiful Hello. venue, two-hour open bar. We have a food truck pulling up for hey, you guys. Hey, I can't wait to Isn't eat. Isn't that so cool? I can't wait to like, eat. Hello. Hello. I don't know. But yeah, so by the time you guys are listening to this episode, I'm not even exaggerating. The tier that is currently the general admission, it's going to be sold out. Like, honestly, yeah, maybe nice. maybe the Thursday if you listen to this early, but by Friday it's going to be sold out, guys. It's a good price. It pays for itself economically. Get those tickets in our link in our bio. This is your final warning, guys. That's true. And uh -huh. the ladies be out. Ladies be outside. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 sure. um, we actually are responsible for a few relationships. No, that is not <laughs> even a, a joke. Few no, this is true. Yeah. We're yeah. not just saying that no, to say it. This no, is no, actual. No. We have the facts. They met at our mixer last year. I wish I could say their names, but you know, they like their privacy. Yeah, keep it low. They keep met it low. At, our, at our mixer last year, and now they're like a flourishing relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for a one night stand, you know, we. That's true. We also did a few of those. Would you? No, not with Alex. Oh, okay. no, I no. thought you were promoting oh yourself. Oh, my God. Yo, no, I never no. know oh my God. Like, I never no, know no, where no, we no. are in life. We don't really talk about our relations too much. So, <laughs> Actually, I don't know Alex, what yeah. you're shooting for. Alex yeah. was being very wholesome last year. He went home. For sure. No, yeah. he got some empanadas and then he drove home. That's it. For sure. That's, it act that's actually what he Took did. Took our producer with us. Yes. Okay. You know All what I'm right. saying? Who were you? After the... Um, who? Yes, Ivan. <laughs> who, who? You were <laughs> out now. <laughs> you were yes, out. Yes. What happened? Who? No, you, you just said, you know, we don't really speak well, about our relationships. We don't. Enough. We honestly don't. Right. So, you know, after the mixer, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I was with our producer, Karen. I think Shout Reggie. Karen, man. You know, I think Reggie was a hub boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know... You just kind of cut quick. I know it was a good time, though. The mixer Great was time. a good time. An amazing yeah. time. Amazing time. Yeah, we went. Um, so as you all know, right. you know, I like to be responsible. So I wanted to make sure everybody else was in their corners. So I knew where you were. I knew where Reggie was going. I just stood back and, you know, I I, I just did my thing. Did you? That's funny because I was like the last to leave. I was? Just, oh, I didn't, oh, oh, you know. He was. I, he was. I, was. I was no, on no, the block. No, Alex, let's, let's, let's actually, this is actually what I happened. I was hugging none the block. Of, none of us knew where Savon was. That's actually what happened. For real? No, yes. No, yeah. no, no, no. I remember no, no. Pierre, no, right? Was, at one point, we were all looking for him. Yes. So Savon Damn, was I downstairs with me. Savon was downstairs with me and then I looked. I think Alex had already went to, could I say the name of the spot? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Empanada Mama. For sure. And then um, Reggie had left. Yes. I'm with Karen. Savon was with us. I turned around for two seconds and he's gone. I'm like, wait. I got kidnapped. Like now I got kidnapped. Uh, oh, I got kidnapped. To the best no, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got kidnapped. I understand that. I got kidnapped. This year, sure. you going to get kidnapped? This year, no. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm curious. I'm providing the vibes. That's all I want to do. I want to have a good time. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Reggie said, August 17th, in the building, pull up, pull up, pull up. Um, it's, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Mm -hmm. Check sure. the tickets, the description below. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know. I don't know how much we can yeah. fucking advertise this thing. Just come out have a really good time with us. We yeah, have, have DJ Nyla Simone, literally Nyla in famous. The building. Come on, big And we Nyla. have Edin, literally one of the best DJ. you guys you know For he's sure. a friend of the show we yeah. have the good music the good drinks the good we have food this year to our open ball and my favorite part is like it's like you know how when you party in new york city it's kind of the same crowd sometimes i'm not saying all the time but this it one is be. literally like an unpredictable where there's gonna be so many new people that are gonna meet yeah. guys you have to come it's gonna be a August mix. Now, honestly come support us right it's our yeah. one event we do every year mm -hmm. it's tradition at this point yep. and we love to see meet mingle y'all mm -hmm. and um yeah last year we, we even said this on the last yeah. episode people came from different states literally yep. 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 that's just surprised me so yeah come come uh have a good time the only thing i'm afraid about this yeah. year it might be much bigger than last year oh. I, I wouldn't oh, be surprised shit. hello Peter because, because the way the way it got packed <laughs> last night oh last Night. Last time, I was you like, at? wow. Yeah. Where was you at? The way it got packed last time, I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Should I be a, not afraid, but this is a, this is actually a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, because like vibe. we've grown so much since last year, so I can't even imagine like how much more it's going to be this year. Oh my gosh. For sure. For sure. I'm sure some oh, love, yes. man. Can't wait, guys. <laughs> right I'm thinking about what happened last year. <laughs> After, oh, when we confined yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm you thinking been about like, ah, oh, wait, hold up. <laughs> You've been real quiet since you've been thinking about it. Yeah, he's like, oh, <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, no. Great time, great time. Great I can't time. wait to see y'all. August smiling, 17th. We only sure. got a week from the time of this recording. Um, yeah, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. There is a really great woman to man ratio. Yes. Yeah, um, sure. I don't ever want to go out and be surrounded by a bunch of dicks. So leave the dicks at home. Like, that's just not Real. my vibe. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So uh, if, if, if that is something that entices you, if you want to be around mm -hmm. that energy. And also the, the, the thing that I'm proud of, the people 
the community that we've cultivated, it's never like any issues. There's no drama. Nobody's trying to be no fake tough guy. Like yeah, they're cool everybody yeah, never, genuinely yeah, yeah. comes out for a really good time. Yeah. The ladies are ladies, yeah. right? And they're always friendly and yeah, nice. Friendly, yeah. nice, throwing yeah. ass here and there. Like yep. it's Check a out vibe. Our video. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, make sure y'all tap in August 17th. We in the building in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, make sure y'all come out, pop out, come support, come show love. And with that being said, it's the Needs No Podcast. I go by the name Savon, S-A-V-O. And yes, you did. He back. Yeah, what up, y'all? It's your boy A as always, the Paco Ramon Poppy. Never alone, always with the posse. Hello, guys. It's me, Reggie. I feel extra blessed to be here, and my feet are soggy right now. <laughs> see that? See what that rain do? See what that rain do? <laughs> and then Pierre. Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> What's yo, going on? He always goes, yo, yo. <laughs> as, if, as if we, as if we like caught him off guard, like, oh, yo. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I feel, I feel really good about this, uh, this week's episode. There's a, a lot happening. There's so much. There's yeah. a lot going Last on. Yeah. There's a lot going on, which is uh, difficult for us because we live such a uh, complex lives, and then we kind of got to. Oh, that's a double entendre. Oh. Stay tuned. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yo, I love Hello? when we all do that because we sound like minions. We're so silly. Some of you. The boy is good. We here, man. We Before we get into the topics, though, Alex, I got yeah. a problem with you. Uh-oh. I got a problem Everybody with you. Everybody always has a problem with you. I got a problem, with you. I got a problem with you. I got a problem Just with you. Just give it, it all. What about me? What about me? I don't got a problem with you. Except you, Lolo. It'd only be me, yo. You soggy today. <gasps> <laughs> I should have brought it up. Yeah, I, don't like, I don't like soggy shit, gang. <laughs> like, but yo, Alex, what I did now, yo, and Reggie, Pierre, Pierre, I already know the answer for you because you're an old head, nigga. But wow. Reggie, wow, all right. For me, yeah. Alex introduces language and oh slang God. and I terminology <laughs> like like no other. Every month. Every month. I like, got, I don't I know if you're ahead of the curve. I don't know if people are just following you. I don't know where <laughs> no, it happens. They're not. But you always introduce a new word, a new term, a new endear, uh, word of endearment. Absolutely. Right? And so your thing of 2024 <laughs> has been twin. <laughs> okay, but like, he didn't like... But, <laughs> listen to where the problem comes. It was the good, problem, twin. No, the problem <laughs> with twin is... Let's go with twin. Now, first off, again, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I hate the butt up. <laughs> twin. I thought twin yeah. was supposed to be like intimate. Like twin is my guy. First off, what? I, it's all, all right. Let me let me take it back. Let me take it back. Let me take it back. The first issue that I have is yeah. when people refer as smoking weed as smoking dope. Okay. Okay, but like, do all people right. say that anymore? Do Some they, people. People still Some use people. the word. I, I don't oh. think smoking yeah, yeah. weed and smoking dope should be synonymous. Okay. <laughs> smoking dope to me means something way worse than weed. Got you. Okay? Got you. Got you. Got so you. I was thrown off the first time I heard dope, but I'm like, ah, right, whatever, cool. And yeah. Then my brother started saying, like, me and one of my brothers, we got into like an actual argument because I'm like, don't you go around saying you smoke dope, nigga? I was like, really pressing. <laughs> you, you, like you sound like old hair. You sound like old hair right now. It's cool. I'll be that. Ah. But I got over dope, and then I'm like, all right, cool. Now I see everybody saying twin. Now the ladies, yeah, I yeah. know that was reserved for the ladies. Twin. twin. Shout out to Money Long, like, and even before Money Long, like, hey, twin was a thing. That's my twin. Yeah. Even though it's always one girl that's badder than the other girl saying that's no still, twin. Still twin. I get it, though. Like, still twin. I, whatever, cool. It's the friend group. But then men started saying it to each other. For sure. Now, yeah. you, being yes. a guy, you use that terminology. Yo, I, what's, I what's good, twin? Now, the first time I heard you say that, you said it to one of your, your close homeboys. Okay. So I didn't think nothing of it. I'm like, oh, that's this guy. Like, that's cute. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's cute. They do this shit. Oh, Don't say we oh cute, God. nigga. Nah, that is. You <laughs> nah, and that is. to call each other twin. I'm like, oh, that's, that's cute. That's yeah, you hard. you real slick. <laughs> nah, for real, so I bet, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really think nothing of it. Right, right, right. But then, you know, we have guests on the podcast sometimes, and we just have like a, a little studio audience. Or maybe sure. sometimes you'll meet a fan, and you're somewhat familiar with the fan right. and you still throw around the word ayo twin that's my twin <laughs> yeah that's twin so I got a problem with you <laughs> what? because you using it too loosely bro alright real talk though I'll tell you this right I didn't originate that word I think it's origin is actually from Atlanta and shout out to my dog PK my boy PK it makes sense right yeah, yeah. and it's funny we're gonna talk about Lil Yachty today and his comments mm -hmm. just surrounding uh, music mm -hmm. I know last week everybody was mad at him because he felt like Atlanta really influenced a lot and we never really spoke on that, but I'll say this real quick to explain. I feel like Atlanta definitely, uh, they spark slang. For sure. For sure. No cap, cap, mm -hmm. twin. True. My dog, PK. Shout out to PK. Uh, Isn't slime Atlanta or no? Blood. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> She was like, whoa, I got that wrong. Oh, whoops. <laughs> no, but no, I, I, no, he was like, 
bloods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, shout out to my dog PK. PK recently moved out of here, like moved out here four or five years ago. Okay. And he probably did three, four years in Atlanta. And mm-hmm. it's crazy, you know, I say twin because I'm really close with him. And when he first started mentioning, I was like, mm-hmm. like, why are you saying that? So why are you much? saying that? Mm-hmm. And then he's such a a high energy person, right? Okay. He's so he's always smiling and shit. And he would also meet new people and go like, "Yo, it's good, twin." And I, it, I've kind of looked at it as a, t- a term of revealment. Oh, oh. Ter- just just like a, it's more of like a greeting for Alex. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's all in the way you say it. Like when you Absolutely. try to say it, meaning twin, yeah, it's yeah. not gonna land. But it's Alex not. says it very casually. Like for example, yeah, like, that's I, the don't problem. Know, I don't know if like Savon. <laughs> I can't imagine Savon saying twin. Like you know, I, I say right now. Yeah, I don't. Say it. What's good, twin? And that's what my problem is because <laughs> I can't say it. Say it because it doesn't fit me. Say it. It's not. So it's not for me. No, no, no. He can, but like mean it. It's like when you call somebody babe. Like you call every girl you fuck with babe. Uh, no, no, right? But I could call twin you twin. and babe is like synonymous to me. But twin, to be a, t- a twin of someone, you guys have similarities, right? No, but you be but saying you have, it to but the fans have, who on. just see you on the train. That's my fraternal twin. <laughs> oh, oh, that was that was funny. That was Damn, funny. that's a <laughs> that, bar, was bro. that was quick. That was quick, right, fam? That was so <laughs> quick. See that? We have some similarities. We like some of the same you know things. We're all human, you know. I, I they listen like to you, need to know. You, I know that. You, you <laughs> use it too loosely, in my opinion. <laughs> like, and then you also make me feel bad for not using twin, because like you be like having a moment with these niggas. Yeah. I don't want to lose, bro. No, nah, we gotta lose, bro. That's the problem. We gotta lose, bro. So when I hear we'll you saying that. twin so yeah. loosely yeah. and just spreading it around to everyone <laughs> and, and, and greeting everyone with twin, yeah. it makes me feel like bro is gonna be extinct, and I need bro. I bro mean, is never going extinct. Yeah, I need bro. I mean, too... you're a brother, so it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Not just the black. I mean, like you actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you hate when people be like, "Yeah, you're into white people and they want to be nice to you." Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. no. Yeah. I'll be, like, be like, wait. I'll be like, yo, chill. Uh, chill. I'll be feeling a little type of way sometimes. <laughs> I'm Alex, by the way. Um, but so, nah, bro, it's fine. But I, I've also said this here on the podcast. Scared of twin. Don't be scared of twin. I like slang. I don't think everyone should be privy to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I really like. I, I enjoy being eloquent. I know a bunch of big words. Mm-hmm. I really do enjoy slang because I don't know. There's something. Hmm. If you understand it, we're on like the same level. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Slang, slang yeah. is like the modern day parable. I like that. Right. I like that because if if you say the word and yeah. if somebody's in tune with what it means, it makes you could say you could say a whole paragraph in one word. Yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. much. And if I know that you know how to use the term. I know we're pretty similar. Like you're cultured, mm-hmm. you're cultured. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, but I be like in Gen Z slang, but you guys hate it. Like my favorite, Riz? I lo- I love Riz. Yeah. I think it's cute. It's it's growing on me. Pause. You be risen people. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. I don't what, know. What do you I guys, liked it. What do you think of my heart? Like what's good, my heart? I hate that. Uh, that that's uh, some New York. It is. Free my heart. Shit. That's what they say. Free my Yo, heart. Yo, free my heart. Free my heart. Go look at my heart. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know, some New York slang. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody from the Bronx calls you my heart, it's kind of yeah. similar to twin. Yeah, like they, nah. this yo, is not that, I don't think this is <laughs> slang slang, oh. but New York guys also love using beloved yes. for everybody. Beloved, that's yeah. For sure. Let us know if you're that's like if you're not from the East Coast and you you would hear someone say beloved. Let us know if that's weird for you. Yeah. Or, or or my heart. My heart. My heart. <laughs> my heart. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to just stick to bro. Yes. What's going on, bro? But you don't Good have to, see to you. use the other slangs. But I, I don't know. I felt mm-hmm. like, because he would call you twin. Facts. I remember that. But and we I would be joking, like, oh, though. no, nah, but that's cool because I know y'all really fuck with each other. And no, then no. he even referred to me as a twin one time. I was like, Facts. oh, shit, like, was good. Oh, twin. Good twin. Like, ah, shit, I was good. twin. Ah, no, I, like, I like when um, Alex and I call each other twin because I'm being sarcastic because we could not look more different. <laughs> like, I would repost a picture of me and Alex and we look opposite. And I'm like, look, this is my twin. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to figure out, like, have fun, have fun a little it, bit. Right? Yeah, like, have fun a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, no, no. Come on. Listen no, no. up, Savon. <laughs> Fuck, bro. Yo, first time Alex called me twin, I thought it was because we were both black. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we were both dark-skinned, so I'm like, the same oh, yeah, that's my twin. What's good, twin? And then I called the light-skinned nigga twin, and you was yeah. confused. And you were like, wait. I, I was my befuddled. bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. <laughs> you just make everybody feel like they the one. That That's what you're supposed I to do. I get it. I get it. That's, that's, that's what you're supposed that's, to do. That's, that's, that's my MO. In life. That's my moniker. You make everybody just feel like they're the one. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And they're really that. the two. <laughs> Fuck it, everybody. I don't like that though, cause I'm not re- I'm not actually special then. No, that, hey, thank you. No, yeah. no, no, and that's no. what I was getting. That's at not with twin. true. That's oh, not true. Okay, okay. That's what I was getting. That's at not with twin. Bro is very generic. I that's not true. Like, like the what's only good, time I say yo, what's good, bro, is when I greet Alex. Yo, what's good, bro? How you doing? Whatever. Yeah. After that, like, if that's, anything, that's bro God. is fake as fuck now. People will call their enemy the bro. Like, yo, bro, don't fuck with me. Twin is more like, yo, let me revere you real quick. You know, even if you haven't thought highly of yourself today, I'm gonna do that. 
<laughs> All right, so I'm real quick, that. before we really get into... <laughs> Topics. Uh, yeah, 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 before we really get into the top, name one thing about each of us that make you your twin. Boom. Oh, we that's do this so, podcast together. That's going to be so easy for him. We love music. Oh. Uh, what else? We we're, enjoy watching shows. We're funny. We're funny as fuck. We're cute. Yeah, facts. <laughs> we have similarities. Like Reggie said, though, we don't look the same. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, right, right? <laughs> we don't look the same. All uh, right, you, you, know, you, 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 you got it. You got it, twin. You got it. Uh, <laughs> you got it. Go you got it, twin. You got it, twin. You got it, twin. You got it, twin. Come on, be my twin. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Nah, you're great. Listen, um, new developments. New development. So many. Take us. <sighs> Where do we go, honestly? I mean, when I first found out of this news, I don't know if I wanted to wind my waist. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know if I wanted to jump out and dance. But Vibes Cartel, the world boss, <laughs> them free the man. <laughs> every man grab a girl, every girl grab a man. <laughs> Welcome home, Vibes Cartel. If you guys don't know, Vibes Cartel is a very, I, you know what's funny? That was the one thing I learned this um, as he got released. A lot of people really don't, are not familiar with Vibes Cartel. Yeah. Okay. But again, I know we're, we're on the East Coast. Mm. So the way we party was a little different, mm. right? Like it's a really like a, uh, what is it? A melting pot. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Especially New York. Especially very New York. Very Caribbean. Right? Yeah. Caribbean culture, African culture, mm. et cetera. Mm. And Vibes Cartel was the soundtrack to my... Uh, parties in high school mm -hmm. the bashments sure. and everything for me it was college yes yeah college he, he played a lot in those types of parties mm -hmm. and uh he's free after 13 years uh i think this is something fans would assume that he this would have never happened um Pierre, well, you got some information on that why was he locked yeah. up for 13 years okay thank you for asking Pierre. let me answer that <laughs> yeah, first yeah you good, good uh a little history a, lesson a, a, alleged alleged murder <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right alleged hey, murder he's free now I, I say alleged because they never found the body Damn. Oh, he was good at it. <laughs> Allegedly. He was better than these niggas. <laughs> and I also saw the people in the comments like, why do you guys want him to be released? This and that. And I just shook my head because he's the same people that wanted a lot of killers free mm -hmm. who are free now. So again, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think I'm right or anyone is right into Toronto. Oh, I'm you still, still playing. playing? You didn't oh, know? That's how excited I am. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> you get that? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how excited yeah, yeah. I am. But yeah, I saw a lot of people Big complain. Chew. Big chew. Big chew not go on them. Yes, sir. <laughs> a lot of people were trying to I critique people that were happy about Vibes Cartel being released. Mm -hmm. If anything, if you're a fan of dancehall music and those things of that nature, I can understand the excitement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It's Vibes, a really big deal. It is a big deal. Yeah. 13 years. Decade, yeah. He also inherited, not her inherited, but he, um, Graves disease. Mm -hmm. He, somewhere along developed. the line, developed, yeah, he developed Graves disease while he was in there. He's, he did 13 years. So people are excited, want to see him healthy, and let's see what he does. Was yeah. it? Sorry, guys. This is. I know we talked about last week about researching and stuff. There this is go. one of the topics that I'm not fully. You know, I'm just asking a question. So yeah. I heard that like his health deteriorating, deteriorating a lot in yeah. jail played a lot into why he was released. Is that true or no? Um, not sorta. If, if we're being honest, Jamaica didn't want him free. Um, oh yeah, Jamaica is also is also it was ruled by uh, London Damn. back in the day. Because all I see yeah. are Jamaicans on my timeline that are happy as hell. So I didn't know that yeah. people in actual like it, who are living in Jamaica did not want him free. Um, not actually Jamaican people, but the Jamaican government. Oh okay, 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 okay <laughs> yeah, okay. Jamaican government wanted to see him in it. I, I, I just want to put in terms why Vibes Cartel is so big and so massive. Vibes Cartel was one of the first musicians to bring. <laughs> an S-class Benz to Jamaica. Yeah. Now, I know that sounds crazy and it might sound vain to some people, but what if I told you that, I learned this recently, you can fit the entire region of Jamaica into New Jersey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a very small place, a very yeah. small country, mm -hmm. and it's big when you do something like that. So yeah, for sure. He was one of the main ones to really get it popping mm -hmm. after all of the, the uh, Movados and the Beanie Mines and all that thing. He had it on lock. For a decade. So, yeah, a lot of people are seeing, happy to see him happy. Well, yeah. we always celebrate freedom. Yeah, yeah we do. You know, mm -hmm. um, that, that's always a big thing. Yeah. I don't know much about it. I know yeah. it's a big deal because I know he's been locked up. Like you said, soundtrack to our lives in yeah. high school and dancing. But um, especially for me personally, when listening to music from other cultures, right, you just feel the vibe. You don't really know much about music the Music is right? a universal language. Sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a vibe. So right. based on his music, it's like, all right, cool. Free him, I'm with it. But everything else, I don't know personally. Like, yeah. I know there's going to be mm -hmm. somebody who he allegedly probably murdered who's upset that he's out, right? Mm -hmm. So there's two sides to every yeah. coin. But 
um, I, I always want to see people be free. And yeah. hopefully, you know, he learned whatever he had to learn during that time. Or somebody learned a lesson from it. And yeah. his health, I did see he looks completely different. Yeah, yeah. Graves' disease is serious. Looks completely different. I, I seen yeah. um, that he had posted a video saying that he was going to take care of himself, mm -hmm. get back to working out, mm -hmm. uh, live a healthier lifestyle, which I know Jamaicans to be pretty healthy as, mm -hmm. a, as a culture, right? Like, yeah. they Pro really... Probably about liquor consumption. Yeah. Because, you know, with the Graves' disease, it's like a heart condition. Okay. So you really got to watch your consumption with certain products things and, of that nature. Well, let's pray for him. And, yeah, and, for and sure. one of his first messages, so he was, uh, when he got released, he was walking to uh, his limo or the limo that they had for him. And um, the first things he said was, hey, like jail, a message to the kids, jail's not it. Um, and just be a good person pretty much. And jail's yes. not it. He just kept that. reiterating that. that. And he was met with his girlfriend, yeah. which made me want to ask you guys a question that I stole from Pierre. <laughs> I don't know how long his girlfriend waited, but I do know that vibes at 13 years. Yeah. If your significant other, someone you love right now, was to go into jail, God forbid, let's knock on wood. Knock on. You never want to see that, right? Yeah. How long do you think you could wait for that spouse? I don't have one. Well, if you had one. <laughs> Use it. Use your imagination. I don't bro. have one. You don't have. You don't if have, it's my it's girlfriend. It depends. Yeah, your girlfriend. It depends. Yeah. Like, it depends on what it, she did. If, it, if we were like young. Yeah, I want to hear it. But if we had like three kids together and that was my husband, that's different okay. than like now. Right. You know, I don't know. It depends. You guys couldn't do a year? A year? Yeah. If he was locked away for a year? Yeah. I could, I could wait a year. You do a like, year? absolutely. You I could wait a year for him to get out. Yeah. You could wait three years? <laughs> I, think my limit, I think my limit would be like <laughs> yeah. if he was locked up for like five years. Okay. Not but eight. if I'm in a serious, serious, serious relationship and they're like, "Oh, he's he's gonna be locked away for like four years," I feel like I could do it because I'm like, "What? Am, what else am I gonna do? Go yeah. and find another man?" Like, no. <laughs> That's me personally. I, I, I think it it depends on your celebrity because mm -hmm. vibes. Because look, people, vibes, big celebrity, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Let's say his woman was again. I don't know nothing. I know a few things, but I don't this in particular. I don't know. Yeah. But let's say she was out there. Do you think word would get back to him? Like, hey, like. Oh, for, for sure. In oh, Jamaica, yeah. everyone, so everyone yes. would know who yeah. she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Jamaica, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, I think it, it depends on your celebrity. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not. No, I'm not. You're it's not waiting. You're not gonna no. Wait? So the moment they get um, indicted, <laughs> you're just gonna. Because what? What are you doing? <laughs> a lot. Why are you locked up? Living life. Like nah. No. Nah. Yeah, it has to be a real legit. What if? What if like, like I, I, you'll love her. It, it, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, That's why know. she's my girlfriend, and I'm like, <laughs> like, no, hey. what the fuck. So, like, so why, like is she, show, why is she? Why is she your girlfriend if you don't love her? You don't love everybody you call your girlfriend. What? Nah, it develops no way. over time. Same nah, way. no way. I don't really. No, we can but, but, but no, listen, 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 listen. No way. Bro. <laughs> it takes, Save on. Well, Reggie, you gotta understand. Reggie is in a very, very unique case. <laughs> no, it's not. Nah, 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 nah. Let's. You ain't even let me get to my point. I'm listening. I'm okay, listening. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Reggie met her man, and on the first date, they knew this was it. A lot of also, people know. They just keep it no, to themselves. No, no, no. Most right. people, it takes some time to develop. Yo, I love you. And feel it and mean it. I'm not getting in no relationship if I don't love that girl. Facts. <laughs> no, I'm saying, we're saying you <laughs> made you made what? her your girlfriend. You Without still don't love her. her. I don't. I, oh, I don't you know. Do I don't that? know. No. I feel, no, no. I, Savon's right though. People have done it. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't why know. Your girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a relationship expert. Y'all know this. <laughs> Y'all know I'm the last nigga to be talking right, about this let shit. Let me let me summarize. Like, what the fuck? I don't know what I'm doing when I'm dating. I had two girlfriends my whole life. <laughs> it's, real. Look, it's terrible out here I, for me. I can summarize what Savon is saying. Yeah. Savon is saying it starts with affinity, and then the journey to affinity to, to love is the relationship. I get that. I get that it takes time to fall in love with someone, but I'm saying like, if you're not in love with them, why did you make her your girlfriend? Just like keep dating. Yeah, because if anything, I'm I'm gonna just continue to date the people that I like. But I'll get into a relationship with someone that I have stronger feelings for. See, I'm different. I'll get into a relationship <laughs> with somebody I like, and then hope it develops into love. People do that. I want to yeah. be because if I'm yeah, really, yeah, that's really not like crazy. You. And then people do that. What is your definition of love? Like my definition of love uh, is extreme. So I'm very good. extreme. You good? Yeah, like they're the one. They're like the one. So, what, but what you mean extreme? Like if <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, you, yeah, what do you explain what you mean? that. Explain, explain it. it. You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you tell I'm me just what saying, like, for the listeners. When, no, when it when it like I take love very seriously, so right. I don't just say it loosely. So if I love okay. you, like okay, I would do the bid for you if I love you. No, you wouldn't. If I really like you, you gotta sit down. I feel like Savon would. Save you on gotta on. sit no, down and do that bit if I really like <laughs> no, you. No, he like go, 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 go learn your lesson. Right? <laughs> but if I love you, I might try to take the fucking charge for you. Quick question. Shit. What if there's money involved? It don't matter. Okay. So how That's many a good question? Uh, I'm Savon. Actually, Savon, Alex, and Reggie. 
How many of your relationships have you actually told the person that you're in the relationship with that you love them? I told a man, woman, I love them. I've said Wait, it before. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm <laughs> I've said it before, but now I realize I'm like, oh, that wasn't love. That was stupid. Yeah. It was yeah. lust. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I, I could, <laughs> I've definitely told every girlfriend I had that I that I love them. Mm-hmm. When I realized that or when I came to that junction, I'm sure I was I'm sure it was before. <laughs> You were what? You sure you were? No, I'm sure it was before we got into a relationship that I expressed that I loved them. Oh shit, that's brilliant. But to say Vaughn's point though, it's like what kind of love? If I have, if I have enough love for you, I can get in a relationship with you. I don't need to be deeply in love with you. I'm sure as yeah, time progresses, yeah, 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 yeah. the love is gonna grow deeper. Also, that's like we're older now, so yeah. we are. I feel like more capable of having the serious, like real love. Like let's get married. But like when we're younger, we could say I love you and like not really mean it as seriously. Like you're young. That's yeah. fire. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, it's whatever. Like when you're 20, you're dating your boyfriend, tell him whatever. Oh, well. Drake was happy that Vibes Cartel was released. He took to his IG story mm-hmm. and wore um, a t-shirt of an album of Vibes Cartel. Why is this album important? Before the back and forth with Drake and Kendrick, and we were still here speculating, he hung that shirt over the mic when he was in the studio. Mm-hmm. And this is around the time where we're kind of waiting for a Drake response after Like That came out with mm-hmm. Future. This was like Metro. in the middle of the... Yeah, it's in the middle of that. Yeah, so he took to his IG and um, he showed some love. And a lot of people were like, yo, stay away from vibes, yo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, and, Drake... And, yeah, I'm listening to oh, No, no, I was just going to say, mm-hmm. the whole reason why he got released, um, it was alleged that the security guards or the, um, the, the guards on the prison were using his phone. <laughs> And his phone was part of evidence that they were trying to um, eventually use to keep him locked up for a, a longer period of time. So they <laughs> tampered with evidence. They were making phone calls uh, and using his phone. And then the, um, uh, not European, the, uh, what, what's the presiding? Um, um, I think the UK. Right. The UK <laughs> government UK. Yeah. decided that, all right, like, it's not a fair trial. And then boom. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so they shot themselves in the foot, basically. Yeah. So what were you going to say about the... You know, no, I just I, I think again, I didn't expect us to start with vibes, but shout out to vibes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Always gotta start and, with vibes, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's gonna be vibes at the mix. <laughs> shout, shout out to vibes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we know so, Alex, when I walked into the studio, yeah, you were you was playing some music. I haven't really had a chance to really to dive into anything. Same. So this I know is very fresh for us. A, a ton that you, you've been catching me up on. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I came in, I heard a vibe, a new, a new vibe from Drake. And I was like, what is this? Right? It's the right. middle of the work week. Right. It's a Tuesday afternoon, the time we're recording this, the time that this news dropped. Right. And Drake apparently has a Fenster and yeah. he dropped some new songs and he just won't go away. <laughs> right? I saw all of this happening and I'm thinking to myself, all right, everything that he has done since the Kendrick Lamar beef situation, whatever, like we hear Lil Yachty saying he was unfazed. We hear Lil Yachty kind of talking for Drake. Um, We see Drake acting unbothered, whatever the case may be. Everything that he's done since the Kendrick Lamar uh, battle beef, whatever you want to call it. One, in my opinion, he's proven Kendrick Lamar right about everything he said about him outside of the pedophile stuff. Not speaking to the pedophile mm-hmm. shit. He hasn't done anything to show that he's a pedophile, right? So right. let me not put that on, on him. Right. But every other way that he has moved after this beat, mm-hmm. he is done. He ran and did the the song with a pop star, Camila mm-hmm. Cabela. Mm-hmm. That was the first thing he did. Yeah. Um. Hey, he's we- also been accused of being isolated, right? We're not seeing him with his usual peers or features. Mm-hmm. Now he's aligning himself with Party Next Door even more like the timing of their collab project announcement is very odd to me because why wouldn't you do this years ago Mm -hmm. it's almost like when i see him not working with lil wayne all of a sudden and now it's wayne this wayne that it's like no when you was hot as fuck and didn't need anybody right you wasn't standing next to Lil Wayne the way that I always felt he should have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now that you're on this island by yourself and OVO got called out and mm-hmm. everybody's like, yo, where's the party album or what's going on with party? Now I see you aligning yourself with party. So everything movie. that he is doing since, Kendrick Lamar either predicted, told us, and he's just proven it true and it just shows me how mm-hmm. out of touch he and his team seems to be. Because That's everybody knows you should have just went away. Yeah. yeah. And to your point, like we've always loved music between him and party. 
why is it now that you're actually taking it serious and you actually want to be like, you know what, let's actually tune it. Let's do the album. Now, to say to your point now, they announced this joint project is supposed to release in the fall. So we'll wait for that. But to say to say Vaughn's point, when he walked in, I was playing a little vibe, and I do want to give y'all some of that. This one is called Blue Green Red. Uh, he released this on his new Finsta page called Plot Twist. He did say Summer Vibes was coming, right? Yes, sir. What shape it sounds like with? a vibe, though. Yeah, this is what he do. He did tell us, hold on. Summer vibes were coming. Now, I'm only playing you some of that because that was the song I liked out of the three pack. Uh, Drake put out 100 gigs, all right? 100 gigs is a collection of videos and like three snippets. songs. Yeah, snippets Random from over the years. Random clips from his, his days. His days over probably like the last decade or so. Yeah. Right? Like Drake has braids now and some of these videos he has a dark season, etc. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> no, it's true. That's how I knew it was old though. I mm -hmm. thought I thought I he remember just... when he looked like that. That's crazy. <laughs> when he had the heart and everything in his head. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That era. <laughs> that era. Um, Yeah, it's a bunch of unreleased things throughout his career. And I don't know, it's funny. When I when I first saw that 100 gigs was just 100 gigs worth of all of that stuff, Yeah, I remember getting like um, reflective, introspective Drake where he would actually talk about those moments that he showcased to us on a file through the music, mm -hmm. right? Like he'd hop on a Sandra's Rose and speak about so-and-so that he met when he was on tour in 08 or he'll hop on one of the timestamp records, right? And he'll get super introspective about how life has changed for him and things of that nature. So I feel I found it so interesting to see that he's showing us that version of introspection now through like is he? Or I is mean, it marketing. I mean marketing for for what though, per se, right? Because I'll say this, right? We know Kendrick has an album on the way, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This three pack he put out in the collection of hundreds of gigs or whatever, it's not gonna compete with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this three songs is not enough to compete with whatever Kendrick has on the way. That's but we for, don't we don't yeah. we don't have a release date from Kendrick. We don't. We don't have a single, right? We, don't. we yeah. got not like us, but who yeah. knows if that's even going to be on the album? Right. So we don't know much about Kendrick's situation. Yeah. Right. So I don't even know if I can equate the two to kind of match in that sense. Um, unfortunately, they're always going to be comparable. Now. So why do you See? know that, but Drake doesn't? <laughs> And when I say that, it's because it's question. he moves as if he doesn't, he's not aware of that. And then it made me really think about some of the things that Kendrick was saying. Like, Oh, you was listening to Kendrick this time. Yeah, I listened to Kendrick. He was saying I, some I shit. To Kendrick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I listened this time around. Yeah, <laughs> Smack some sense into me. Like, <laughs> God damn, nigga, relax. But no, it's just everything. Like, I'm, I'm struggling. So LL yeah. Cool J. Right. Um, he's been going around talking about his uh, Mount Rushmore for Def Jam. Yep. Right. Uh, dope interview. Shout out to uh, Cool J. Shout out to you too. I know oh, yeah. you went to his listening just went party to his week. listening party this past week. Ran into Elliot Wilson. Elliot, what up? Shout out to Elliot. Yeah, he, too. Was, he was a moderator for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, and, and hearing people give that list and talk about the greatest rappers and all this other stuff, like it forces me to think about Drake's placement in the greatest of all time rappers and rap artists and all this other shit. Yeah. But the way that he's moved and the way that Kendrick read him and everything that he's proving Kendrick to be true is like, I don't, mm -hmm. he's not, I don't know if he's a rapper. Right? Hey. Yes. I, I don't know if he's like a rapper. I think he's an artist and I think he's been able to navigate, but like, you're so exposed. You've been so exposed, right? And you didn't change your pivot. Like, you didn't play any type of defense. You think offense, offense, offense. And him doing this to me is another sign of just offense, offense. I'm going to drop. Or trying to get I'm a filler. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do something, trying to get anything. A feeler. Yeah, but yeah. it's never, it's not in the essence of what it is to be an MC in that way. Like, the MCs that we know, the rappers that we know, what we expect from people who just came out of the biggest rap battle ever mm -hmm. to just move in this direction, to do the leak with Lil Yachty. And just the way that he moves, it just doesn't give, like, I'm a rat. Like, mm -hmm. I'm him. Like, yeah. he's not, this is not very 
hip hop of him. It's, I guess so, but I'm not like the hip hop barometer guy. Yeah. But I know I grew up in this culture and I know what it is to see like competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you thought this was going to be a Meek Mill situation again with Kendrick. Mm -hmm. That's what I think he really thought. I think he was going to get the jokes yeah, off. Yeah. He was going to clown them. He was going to make the memes. And unfortunately, a lot of people was rooting for Meek Mill, but Meek Mill couldn't really pull him into the deep end of like, nah, nigga, this is real hip hop. Let's, right. let's, let's swim in this pool over here, right? Like <laughs> yeah. Meek Mill didn't have that capability to do that mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. where Kendrick did. And mm -hmm. he pulled him into the deep end. Like he went there, yeah. And Drake is like, nah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just doing this for the likes and I'm right. just doing mm -hmm. this for the image and the jokes. Like he thought it was going to be a Meek Mill part two mm -hmm. and it's not that. And now you're not even shifting the narrative in a way that you're responding to what happened to you. Right. Like when Kendrick said, yo, stop saying nigga. And then Drake came back with this song. Nigga, I said it. Since the beef has concluded, I haven't really heard Drake rap. Mm -hmm. I know he told, he, he, he uh, promised us summer vibes on the way. I heard him on Gordo's album. That's a house album. Um, I heard him on the, actually Sexy, Sexy Red. 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 He yeah. rapped on that. And I was kind of like in and out, right? Like, but he it wasn't really talking stick. about anything serious. He wasn't really talking about anything. That's why I was talking about the introspection, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how, how did he age in reverse with, with music? Isn't that kind of crazy? What do you mean? Like, again, on those albums, like... Oh, like, in the beginning, he was super deep and introspective, and then now he's not doing any he, of that? He knew how to blend all the introspective shit with just fun vibes. And we loved it. And we he was loved relatable. It. He knew how to relate. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he lost his ability to relate because we see how successful he is. And that's one of the downfalls of success, right? He's a victim of his own success in certain degrees. And that's probably why we feel like he can't get as introspective because his introspection is things that 99% of us can't relate to. Right. So maybe that's why he lost changed. it. Maybe that's why he lost his superpower. But I'm just speaking from like a rap standpoint, from a rapper, from an MC standpoint. Like, yeah. again, we said this at the top of the podcast, growing up in New York, you're exposed to so many different things, so many different cultures. Like I had no choice but to grow up on the locks. I had no choice but to grow up on 50 Cent and see some of the things like, we really I understand what it is to be a competitor in that field yeah. for, from a fan perspective obviously I'm not a fucking rapper yeah. so I can't talk to it from there but it's just like everything you're doing just is against what my faves would do like a Styles P never in my life never in his life a DMX right some of the people who even have criticized him in the past DMX was a huge critic of Drake at some point yeah. because he just smelled. Nah, so I'm off with him. Something's off with him. He's cosplaying <laughs> you know, as a rapper. You know DMX smelled it. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I just yeah. thought it was real interesting just seeing how he's taking this approach after. Again, his music is undeniable. Yeah, and so I don't think artist. it's the, the, the conversation of music at this point. Yeah, you're not saying he makes bad no, music. No, it's never about the music when no. it comes to him. Like That's what he does. Uh -huh. But now... After the rap battle, it's time for me personally to just be like, oh, he's just a music maker. He's yeah. not a rapper. Like, mm -hmm. I can't put him in the top five, top ten mm -hmm. rappers anymore because of what I believe that to actually be. He's rumored to have a, basically a mixtape finish with Conductor Williams. So if you guys don't know who Conductor is, he's, he does the boom bat beats. On the uh, scary, his last album where he had the extended edition where it was just all for rap dogs, songs yeah. for all the dogs, ex extended, extended. Mm -hmm. right? Conductor has some joints on it, so I don't know when that is to be, when that is slated to release. Mm -hmm. uh, like how I mentioned before, it feels like he's just trying to throw some feelers out there, right? Like, what do y'all want? What are y'all looking for? I remember, and I want to know if you guys share the same sentiment. I remember when we was coming up with Drake. And when I say coming up with Drake, I'm talking about the take cares, nothing was the same, the views, the et cetera, right? There was a time as a, as a Drake listener that it was hard for me to find a bad Drake song. Mm -hmm. Like I, I remember having these conversations with folks like, yo, mm -hmm. name one bad Drake song to me. Mm -hmm. And they would say some funny shit like, I don't know, Ratchet, happy birthday. And I'll give it to them. Like, All right, cool. I get it. But even that song stuck, yeah. right? Like women use that every year for their birthday and for each occasion. It is yeah. your fucking birthday. birthday. Like, it, it was to a point where it was like, yo. I remember that when people would be like, remember? yo, name, name one bad Drake song. Okay, like, so yeah, I'm not yeah. bugging, right? Mm -hmm. So we, that was a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like a few years ago. Yeah, a few yeah. years ago. Right? I feel like we are past those days mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And maybe his output is to blame. I think it's just um, the tarnishing of his image. And now when you say bad things about Drake's music, people like tend to agree. When back then, it wasn't as common. It wasn't. Even, but I'm talking maybe, Reggie, even before the beef, right? Before oh. the beef. Were there some Drake songs that you can identify that weren't maybe like, oh my God, the best? Maybe like yeah. around 
honestly never mind when people I, were kind I like of thinking really? I love it too I love it too yeah. but I'm saying like when he started doing that type of stuff a lot of people turned on him like oh my god like what are you doing Drake mm. like we're, it was very like that was the first time where I felt like a lot of people were like okay I I don't like his music anymore right but that's 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 so crazy to me because you you can be an artist and like or try different things to see you know what kind of palette your audience has has or if the audience has a palette for the type of music the new music that you want to do so like I remember when uh, honestly Nevermind came out, everybody was, you know, throwing dirt, dirt on his name and saying Can I oh, add to he's that? bad. Yeah, go ahead. You want to know one of the main reasons why I love honestly Nevermind so much? What's that? It came from left field, yep. and he didn't give a fuck. Yeah, he mm-hmm. did it. He wanted to throw it out and let you know, hey y'all, I know this might be weird to y'all, but mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. I'm not listening to y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to see what's working outside. I'm not gonna throw it out first. He just gave it to us and stood on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if you if yeah, you listen to the lyrics, like, yeah, yeah, he was he was spitting on that. He was if, if you break shit. down the lyrics, he was. Drake is very like he drops a project that he wants to drop, and then he's very like. You guys are gonna love it in three weeks. Watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope he's not swaying away from that, Reggie. Okay. Right? Like we, uh-huh. we saw, and we're gonna talk about it in a second. We saw the leak with Yachty on the Cost Not stream. Mm-hmm. We saw the Gordo joints. Like, he's just he since the beef, he hasn't really shown us that he's confident in whatever he's releasing. Matt, I could be wrong. Oh, I, he's like his, his yeah. release, he's not releasing it as a release. He's very like uh, here, here it is. Here I, it hope, is. I hope you guys like it. Yeah, like, every release right. that has been kind of shy. Yeah, like, shy releases. Or right he's, way to put he's it. like acting like, I mean, I don't care, so I'll drop this. Like, yeah, but yeah. I feel like he might be as he's pushing that button to release it. He's kind of nervous. Trying to see he's what he's trying the, to act like he's not nervous. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because again, back to honestly, never mind. Yeah. I know he just felt passionate yeah, about that. Yeah, he was project. like, he's like, they're gonna love this. They're gonna like, love this. Yeah, yeah. And if they don't, I don't give a fuck. Okay. I'm standing yeah, on it, right? Yeah. Okay. And I feel like he's swaying away from that. I don't know if that's helping. Oh, like the casualness with which he's dropping these snippets, these leaks, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like, yeah. can you like actually just release something <laughs> if you're gonna do this? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think one of the things that kind of helped Kanye when he was dominating shit, and I know we're going to talk about Kanye a little bit later too, yeah. but Kanye always compared himself to entities and to pop stars. Michael Jackson. It was Kanye's comparison for himself was Michael Jackson. And when you say, I'm the Michael Jackson of hip hop, or I'm, I want to be the next Michael Jackson, it takes you away from just being a rapper, right? Like nobody has ever looked at Kanye and said, he's the greatest rapper today greatest rapper alive right, right. they go artists we, we, yeah greatest rap Somebody artists and hip hop artists or star yeah where i think i don't know if it, if it was us as a culture or if it was drake who gave him the number one spot as he's the best the greatest rapper and for a long time i think he had us fooled i really do You're talking about yeah drake oh no drake. i think drake had us well, fooled for a very long time well, of being the number one rapper well let's but it's break- like no you're the number one maybe rap artists or gotcha. artists that can rap or gotcha. artists that does rap. Right. But like... Like you identifying as a rapper, yeah. but you're really like an artist. Yeah, you're an artist. Yeah. You're more of the... And I don't want to say fucking Michael Jackson. That's crazy. But you're more of a, a universal artist than you are a rapper. And I think we've all acknowledged that. But this beef in particular and the way that he's moved after mm-hmm. confirmed it for me personally. Are you saying That's he's too saying. eclectic to be a rapper? No. I think his energy. Yeah, the way, the way he was moving, like... After literally Kendrick took the, I don't know, the veil off, whatever you want to call it, his image, his facade, there we go, his facade off, Mm -hmm. he had a chance to be like, you know what? No, like, you're wrong about me. Like, I'm actually hip hop. I'm I'm the greatest rapper. And then after the beef ended, this is what he does with it. We got, it's like, damn. It's like, damn. Yeah, we got Hey There Delilah, which was like a spoof. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, Wagwan Delilah, which was a spoof. I I think, Reggie, to your point, I think that kind of happened with uh, Pusha T because the whole blackface thing. No. Mm-hmm. But nah. since then, I don't know. People Drake didn't has turn released, on him yet. Yeah, Drake has released yeah. a plethora of rap, R&B, and since just then. music since yeah. then, right? It, but see, back in terms of who... That did hurt him, though. Yeah. See, Savon and I got into a little back and forth over that topic when we first mentioned it. But mm-hmm. I think part of the reason why is because to Drake, Pushy T felt like he wasn't close to him. Again, like that was, was out of his stratosphere. Kind of like the Meek Mill thing. Yeah. Right? He yeah. thought he could just clown his way out of right, it. Right, right. Big bank, take little bank kind of situation to whereas Kendrick said, nah, we go swim in the deep end. And come, people, come to the deep end. And and people respect Pusha T, of course, right? It's just the fan base and, yeah. and you know. The visibility. The visibility that Kendrick that. It's just different. Yeah, it's, it's just, just different. different. It's just a little bit different. Right, right, right. And again, I think he just really met his match when it came to Kendrick. And now, like Reggie said, the veil is, is unveiled. Like, yeah. And you had a chance to go left and you went right and there's nothing wrong with it either mm-hmm. like I'm not knocking him you for can do whatever it you want. but in real time yeah. I think I'm starting to see oh no this 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 
Yes, he can rap very I'm fucking glad well. You just said that. Yes, he can rap very fucking well. Yeah. But I don't know if he 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 can get that that title. I don't know if I, I put him in that that class anymore. Can I play you some of the rap from uh, the Hundred Gigs? Let's do it. Just so you could. She could get a little bit of it. That's Young Thug right there on the hook. His verse coming right now. So what is say, this? <laughs> like, what am I listening to, bro? Like, can you look, look. Right inside, like. What? What? What was the point? What was the point in playing it? The point in playing it is about his raps, right? So this is along with the joint he did with Sexy Red. This is probably the second time I've heard some rap since the beef. Mm. And shit, I know it was a leak or maybe an old record or anything, but I thought if you're going to put some raps out, even if it's on the 100 gigs of leaks or whatever, that you would want to showcase some talent. Like you said, he's not this confident. Shit, yeah, this yeah. shit was just cool. Yeah, he's this not shit, Just a little cool, like we know, Drake can rap. Let's be clear. I don't want anybody to misquote what you're saying or what the three of us are saying. We know Drake can rap. Maybe in terms of like where we were placing it though, mm -hmm. right? Because of, and hey, the, ba the battle might have shed a little light on that. But when I hear this stuff, I go, yeah, you could rap, but dog, you used to just say more. It's you know? just different. Like yeah. nothing, nothing is hitting. Like nothing, the, none of the bars are hitting. Yeah. yeah, like you used to say more, you know? Now it just feels like you're just trying to keep up with the times of what's, you know, what's going on. But I never knew you for that. I knew you to uh, draw the, the call. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like, Obviously, he's had some amazing, amazing, amazing rap songs, but that yeah. has been a critique even before the Kendrick beef, like <clears> for his <throat> whole it. career that his rap songs yes. don't really have a really concrete message. Got you. Like that has always been a critique throughout the last decade. So I think just now it's even more extreme. I think I got it personally, right? And we go to the next topic after this. I am. I don't want to hear Spooky Drake anymore. The first time I heard, oh yeah, you hate that cadence. I hate Spooky Drake. I, I find out a, a way to label it now. <laughs> when I heard Sicko Mode, I turned it off. I liked it. I hate Sicko, Sicko Mode. Mode was fire. I, I, the beat change. It's and a all great that. song. Yeah. I'm sure everybody loves it. Me, I don't like Sicko Mode because Drake raps that I was used to. Like he was more vibey with it. Like he wasn't trying to be a menace. When he be trying to be a menace and pick all these menacing ass beats, like he about to go spin. Personally, it turns me off. I'd be like, you're like all right, whatever. Like, come on, bro. Because again, I know what your music is about. I, I, I've heard your music before spooky shit. Before you got all gangsta and shit, I heard what the rap sounded like. So when I hear you go into spooky mode, I go, dog, you're not even really trying to play with, play with your pen. When you but, go into spooky mode, it sounds like you're just trying to kill niggas. And I'm like, dog, I'm cool, bro. I'm not mad at it because people do get exposed to different lifestyles and different people and, and different uh, yeah, affiliations For and sure. stuff like that. Especially when you're one of the biggest artists in the world, you're going to have people who want to attach themselves to you, which is like Mob Ties, right? We, the song Mob Ties, we mm -hmm. know his affiliations and some of the people who've uh, backed him from a street standpoint. So I'm not mad when he gets in that bag because there is a market for it and he can do everything he well. Can do, he can do whatever he He does wants. everything well from a music standpoint. Yeah. He can do right? Like, I, I'm not even questioning the musicality of Drake because he could do and say whatever it is that he wants to say on the track and it's always going to sound fire eight out of ten times. It's yeah. always going to sound tough. Right. The problem that, not the problem, but what I've noticed is he just doesn't embody what it is to be that best rapper right. in the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, like when it comes to spooky mode, when I, when I hear 21 Savage, get, I expect it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so when it I- It fits him. It fits him. Yeah. When I hear 21 talk about spinning and all of the guns and having magazines and all that <laughs> shit, I'm like, all right, cool. When I hear Drake go do it, I'm like, bro, no. Are you, are you saying that because you, it's part of 21's story? Part of his story, part of his MO, right? And it, it just suits him, right? For mm -hmm. me personally, I guess y'all don't hear it. When I hear, uh, uh, what's it, the what, sickle mode? When I hear uh, the joint, he, this is the joint he did with Travis. When I hear all of those shits, I go, bro, it sounds like you're trying too hard to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. And Savon brought up a really good point. Sometimes you get exposed to certain shit and it makes you that. But it's like, dog respectfully 21 savage is great but you're more talented than 21 savage so so you can talk about more than spinning blocks mm -hmm. or this and that 
Did you feel that when Sycamore first dropped, or is this a new revelation that you're feeling now? I felt the same way. Okay. If anything, I just. You didn't like Sickle Mode? I still Alex. don't like Sickle Mode. What? He's I bugging. still don't like Sickle Mode. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex is bugging. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is so Alex crazy. Is I love so many Drake songs, and I've said this before. Like, R&B Drake, that's for my real bag. Okay. That's my shit. R&B Drake is 99 <laughs> overall rating. It's yes. piped down R&B Drake. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's How much R&B? I got to spend no, for you to pipe that's down? R&B? No, no. He's How deep I got to dig for you to pipe okay, down? Okay, I don't know. I saw what? a track list. I saw he was performing. Don't know how many pants I'm going to take to get and over you. you. That's, that's straight up singing okay, at that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I meant. I didn't like, yeah. hear it. I don't that's think, oh, it's R&B Drake. That's definitely R&B Drake. That's rap? You think that's rap? I don't know don't what it is. It's, it's Drake. It's, it's that's the thing. This nigga. Yeah. He's singing. He's talking about he's women. He's everything. It's fun. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one of his best no, songs then, ever. Yeah, Pipe I'll say, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it, that's recent. It's a top five so, song in his catalog. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not mad at that. Like, it's a top five yeah, I'm not mad at that. It's melodic rap. It's a lot of rap. No, sometimes we like Drake no, no, with the no. melodies. And for like fifty percent of the song, he's like not even just rap singing. He's singing, singing. When you yeah. re-listen to it, like the and I'll listen to lie that you would tell all no. night. Like that's right. singing, singing. I, I love okay. that. Yeah. I don't think rap Drake holds a candle next to R and B Drake. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't even think it's close. And this is not to discredit his rapping ability. I, I've heard some very good verses from him. Again, I'll say that the best introspection shit I heard from him was on those earlier mm-hmm. albums. Early days. Those views, those. No. Oh, and the Tom Stan records, of course. That's I was what he really. Say, I but don't to your know. point, though, when is the last time we've got that? Do Not Disturb, for me, it <laughs> might have been the what last year was, one. What year was Do Not like, Disturb? Maybe 18. 18? Six, yeah, you 18, see the 17, like 18? That? Yeah, it's been a minute since, I, my felt, point? since yeah. I felt like, oh, this nigga, yeah. But see, so. R&B Drake has never disappointed me. You see yeah. the difference? Like, I like rap Drake, yeah. but it's disappointing me sometimes. Uh-huh. R&B Drake never disappoints. These days. <laughs> Come on. I'm letting God handle all things about me. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, It yeah, never yeah. disappoints. While we on Drake, um, how y'all feel about his announcement of doing a collaboration album with Party Next Door? I'm excited. I mean, um, I do agree that the timing is a little like, I mean, you could have done this the last fucking five, six, seven years where everyone was making fun of Party for not dropping, but like, or, or that Drake doesn't really help out Party as much as he should. You could have done it then. And so the timing really does seem like, okay, this is real convenient because, you know, people are going to love it. But at the end of the day, I'm not mad. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Yeah. I feel like he missed his window for me to be excited. Like, I'm going to listen to it because it's Drake. And it's party. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I'm going to turn it on. And I think it's going to be really good. But it, it, it gave me the feeling of Marvel, what Marvel did last week with Tony Stark. Got you. <laughs> Why is that? When Marvel announced Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom, it felt like an act of desperation. <laughs> 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 nah, everybody got to play. You no, gotta, everybody got to play. Desperate for Marvel to I see, I see recast what you're I see what you're because y- y'all know y'all are starving for a movie. Even Deadpool said it. Like, hey, Wolverine, you're joining the MCU at a real low point of the universe. Like, it's fucked up right now. Yeah. So they're aware of how bad the reception has been to the Marvel movies, right? Like, they know, oh, what we got to do, it's something we got to bring Hugh Jackman. That's the big reveal. The first the first bomb is, boom, we're going to bring Hugh Jackman, right. reintroduce him to the, or introduce him to the MCU. Cool, we got Hugh Jackman, we got Wolverine on camera, yellow suit, we're doing things in the right direction. The next move of desperation is, oh, shit, we're going to bring Robert Downey Jr. back into the fold. Mm-hmm. knowing what that is going to do for the fans of Marvel because yeah. we're so invested in the actor and the person of Robert Downey Jr. in Marvel. And you're saying we as fans know what a Drake and Party Next Door project is going to sound like. Exactly. So, so it feels, you can fall it on feels that. like, yeah, yeah it's desperation. Could, like, right, you, right. like Reggie said, you should have been, did, yeah, even if y'all would have just done. did it. Uh, EP. Long time. Even if y'all didn't do a full album, what? you could have been used to, hey, it's me and Party because everybody wanted that. Yeah. Now, I think a lot of people have checked out a Party no, I don't know. A lot I don't of people know loved his album. Like, I don't know yeah. about that. I know he's his taking a, album this year. I know he's taking a hiatus. Yeah, people love this album, but he has that discography that people always no, go sure. back to. You know, for sure. So the I don't time know if people are complete. Yeah, the time it is seems, definitely it odd. Seems, it seems desperate. Yeah. No, I, look. Like I, a hail mary. I can see that. Yeah, it's desperate. See, yo, it, seem, it seems like a hail mary that could work. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. I ain't gonna I don't mind it. Yeah, it seems yeah. like they I'm can not catch mad that pass. At it. I'm not mad at anything that I'm saying right. on this pod. I am not mad at yeah. any of it. It's just an observation with my third eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, but I see what right when you made the analogy with the Marvel thing. I definitely see what you're saying. It's like, damn, like he's like, I got to do something crazy to get them back on my side, and boom. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just one of those. I see what you're saying. Like, I wish you would have mm-hmm. embraced party or anybody in OVO in that way before you got cooked. 
in a rap battle. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. now it looks like oh, you're trying to play catch up. Like, what is your yeah, like, what is your move? You this you, you have 20, to do 20, this. It's 2024. Like, you've yeah. done collab albums with every nigga in Atlanta. Mm. That is very true. Like. Mm. In college, so I was in college, like, starting from 2014, and then, like, we were listening to Party Throughout. It's been 10 years, and now he wants to do a collab album right. Party. You know what when I'm saying? When they were joking like, about Party being in the sweatshop in his house. <laughs> and that was, like, for yeah. five, yeah. six years. Like, <laughs> and he fact. never did this. Like, that's, that's a fact. But yeah. then also, we don't know what Party was, was going, going through. through. Like, what right. if Party didn't want to do a Drake album? You know, there's a lot to it. Like, nah, it was, it was finances. Finan- the finances were a thing. <laughs> it was a thing. Yeah, like, what you mean? It was Party and Drake. If Drake wanted to do a collab album with done, Party Next Door, could have done anytime. Party would have happily taken that. Yeah, no. Every no. artist in music would have happily taken that, especially if I'm on your label. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think it's more of a Drake thing. Drake it, just has the power. I he feel, has the leverage. I feel like he's trying to lean all the way into his Toronto shit now. Okay, but like, yeah. I mean, he has always rep for Toronto, mm-hmm. but okay, actually, you finish that point first because okay. I have another point. Okay, God. Yeah, I feel like he's trying to lean all the way into his Toronto stuff. Like, again, that sound that The Weeknd himself and Party kind of curated out of out of the six, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's stuck. Because America's abandoning him. Yeah, it feels, so he's like, all right, cool. And he did say this, like, I'm going to get back to what the people love from me. So mm-hmm. maybe that just sounds like a dude like, all right, cool. The rest of y'all don't like me. All right, let me feed the people who are really going to be with me regardless. Hey, what's like, your point, Reggie? All right, fine. Um, speaking of like just, and also, Savon touched on this a few minutes ago, where one of the main things that Kendrick was saying, kind of, I think, was like, you really don't have like a true community, which is why also what Alex is just saying, he's mm-hmm. going back to Toronto. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking about like, Kendrick was right because after all the beef happened, no one is really rallying around Drake. Like, no one as a collective is is kind of supporting him or like kind of picking him up. Um, especially the, OVO, the like where where is OVO supporting him his own label? I don't know. I just I do feel bad, but it's like it's kind of crazy he, to see he is like, that when Savon was saying like he is kind of like alone he, right now. Like, yeah, he's it's stick, so crazy. He's sticking with his friends like Lil Yachty. Yeah, uh, Lil Yachty <laughs> sent a record to Kostanov. That's for, good transition. Right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much that's gonna do. Drake, but. <laughs> we, can, we can play him in a second. <laughs> uh, Lil Yachty sent a record to Kostanov. Uh, to play on his stream and you guys know the streamers are now the new funk flexes for sure they're the ones kind of and i heard that Absolutely. kai yeah i heard kai is supposedly supposed to start a new uh series where he's strictly uh introducing unreleased music from artists mm-hmm. so yadi actually sat down with andrew schultz and the song that i'm talking about little yadi spoke about really quickly now before i play this clip um he gave the song to, to Cost or not, and it seemed like most of Drake's supporters or even people that are just casual fans liked the record. Like it was a cool little bop. It was calm. It was nice. It was also uh, sampled from Hotspot. Those of you who are not familiar with Hotspot, Mr. Hotspot, Mr. Hotspot. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I just always been calling him Hotspot for oh, years. Did. Same thing. But yeah, he's Mr. Hotspot. You, you don't f- call him Twin. He's twin. He from Atlanta. Okay, yo, 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 him twin. That's twin. Right, that's I'm twin. just making sure. He from I, Atlanta. I know you just be throwing that around. And no, shit. I, I don't even feel special no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we can all be twins. No, nah, we can't though. Why we all can't be twins? Nigga, call me bro. Nah, nigga, that's mad general. <laughs> call me bro. That's general. Not for you. That twin. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Hotspot. He's always made... Uh, he's a social media guy, right? Like, mm-hmm. he did a bunch of skits mm-hmm. and things of that if nature. If you guys see his face, you're going to immediately recognize yeah, him. Yeah, like, just Google it right now. You're going to be like, oh, and, I've seen him on Instagram before. And, and he was big on dancing. He was big on dancing. Yeah, he was yeah. big on Vine. Yep, like, yep, he was yep. one of those creators mm-hmm. over the past decade on social media. Yeah. Since then, he also makes music. And um, a couple years ago, he was making secular music, right? Which is just music that anyone can digest. It might have some curse words in it, you know, things of that nature. As of recently, he's kind of pivoted. Yeah. And he's really in tune with his uh his faith. Yeah, his faith, his religion, yeah. et, et cetera. And, and he works with kids, um, big on kids. He works with kids now, right. And Lil Yachty sat with Andrew Schultz on Flagrant and he kind of spoke about how the record came about because people wanted the record to actually come out because they liked it. Mm-hmm. And he kind of explains why. We couldn't get the, the sample cleared. Uh, hey. So I just let Kyle play it. <laughs> oh, that's smart. Yeah. So that's not coming out. No. But it's everywhere. Mm. Yeah, but it's just a snippet. No, I let him play the whole song. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I tried to listen to it and it felt like the quality was. I mean, maybe, but shit, it's still out there. Yeah. Okay. Does, I'm sorry. How does that work business wise? I know that your man, maybe he doesn't charge you, but let's. Kai? Okay. No, no, no. Kai. I'm talking about Drake. So it's like if you have. Whoa, if, you have a, me? if you have a feature from I don't somebody. I Drake charges anyone. 
I think he's not doing I think the he's feature if outside he don't fuck of, with you. Okay, so mm-hmm. outside of Drake, let's say you had a feature, um, it's on a song, the sample doesn't get pr- uh, proved, and you leak it. Do you still have to pay that artist for that verse, even though you're not putting it out and making any money off it? No, but but that but you the only people you like give Fiji to they're paying before. Mm-hmm. You pay me before I do the verse. Mm. Uh, so don't uh, pay me for verse and not give me the verse, then you pay me. And you pay me before I even do it, because I don't probably don't know you. Gotcha. But okay. you make a song with someone else's music. A lot of people confuse that. And then hope that they give you the rights? What do you mean? Like in this situation, like you couldn't get the sample clear. Yeah, but this wasn't an artist. This was an Instagram social media influencer. And they wouldn't clear a sample? Yeah, he went down like a Christian path. So before you have any more uh, comments on that, I also want to play what Hotspot replied to that with real quick and we can kind of get into it just to hear his uh, perspective. Um, and we sent it in to them. So hopefully they re-record the clean reference and we come we come out with the clean goodness gracious all together. So I said, it's a process, but it's, it'll be good for both of their brands. Why you talk like that? Like that. Like so. I'm blessed to work with children, so we just got to make it clean for them. Yeah, so basically, um, Drake, Lil Yachty, they made a song. It had a sample in it. Um, they wanted to put it out. Before you put it out, you have to get it cleared. Hot, uh, Mr. Hotspot, a.k.a. Alex's twin, he twin. didn't uh, clear it. And so now they got this back and forth. Yeah. I think the one thing that I took away from this, because this is standard like music shit. We hear about sample clearances all the time, people not clearing things, whatever the case may be. The one thing that I was like, eh, I don't know how I really feel about that is Yachty saying, oh, yeah, I just leaked it. Yeah. And also, it's not like he said way more than that. He really kind of like diminished Mr. Hotspot in general. He's like, yeah, Absolutely. whatever. I'm like, I'll just... I'll just release it. Like, who cares? And that was everywhere. Like, Absolutely. his whole response to that, I wasn't really feeling that. But yeah. I don't know if I have any expectations for a little Yachty. I think since he's been introduced to us, I've always thought... And, and uh, Charleston White said this. And I thought it was pretty, <laughs> like, accurate mm-hmm. for all the wild shit that Charleston White says. Uh, but this was one of the things I was like, oh, wait, I think he actually sees Yachty uh, for what Yachty is, which is Yachty it just seemed out of touch. Mm. He just seems a little bit detached from reality. Absolutely. And again, going back to Drake being a victim of his success, I think it's just being a victim of success. When you just have blind spots because you're just a super creative, you're super talented, you're super looped in, whatever the case may be, I think that's something that applies to Lil Yachty. Like going back to his um, issue with Joe a few years ago on Complex, not really understanding the business of his business mm-hmm. in real time. Mm-hmm. And Joe trying to explain to him. Now it was very animated and it looked kind of crazy. Yeah. Best meme of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it looked kind of crazy when it was happening. Yeah. Yeah. But the message that Joe was trying to share with Lil Yachty is essentially you're out of touch. Mm-hmm. You don't know. Like that he should care more. You that know? You, you, yeah. you should right. care more. You should be a little bit more aware. And this is just one of those things where I feel like maybe he's just unaware or maybe he just doesn't give a fuck. Or you're just in a position where you don't have to be aware because I'm already super up. Yeah. Drake is now charging me for features. I'm allegedly his ghostwriter. I'm lit. I'm writing for the city girls. I'm lit. I'm me. So I don't got to play by the same rules as everybody else. That's what it feels like Lil Yachty is doing. But it also comes off a way to a... Uh, 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 the average creator or the person who does yeah. have to think about, oh, wait, so you're just going to use my likeness? You're just going to go around me like, fuck out of here, nigga. Who are you? Like, that's how I was listening to Lil Yachty. Like, yeah. who, you really like, oh, you think you him for real, for real. Because like, you clearly like, let's say I was a content creator. You liked, you, you liked my content enough that you wanted it for your song. So you value that. But then you don't value me as a creator because now you're not even going to do what I asked of you. When I heard uh, Hotspot's response, I clapped. <laughs> I clapped. Yeah. Yeah. And I, w- I was taken aback a little bit because you don't get too many people who are going to deny to do business with Drake. Drake, yeah. And stand on his morals. And stand on your morals and what you align with, mm-hmm. right? Like... <laughs> capitalism has tricked us into thinking that we all want the same things so a lot of people in the comments like why would you fumble why would you do this that's your drake feature you're out of here if you do that and you can tell like hotspot don't give a damn no he's he's about not none of that shit. he's like nice. i didn't fumble like oh. i don't want to do this yeah and i don't know i was gonna say it's, it says a lot to like having having a heart having a soul having a conscious especially in this industry exactly like mm-hmm. in this industry, that's not 
easy to find, you mm -hmm. know, to find somebody who would be like, you know, I'm putting the kids first mm -hmm. or I'm a lot. See, this, this is my whole thing, right? Hotspot strikes me as the individual who, yeah, the Drake like collab, that could probably bring in a lot of money or opportunity, but he seems more satisfied to accept and be a part of whatever he aligns with mm -hmm. and whatever he aligns with. It looks like he's just okay with whatever comes back from that. And that's something a lot of people struggle with. John B. just told y'all, everybody ain't trying to sell their soul. <laughs> everybody don't, everybody don't want to be Justin Timberlake. Mm. Some people want to be JC. <laughs> yeah. Some people want to like have talent and keep their soul intact and not do the bullshit yeah. that comes with being in the industry. Yeah. This is, and Mr. This is, Hotspot is just a perfect example. An, Another, anom an anomaly. An anomaly. But not so much. I think the reason it's an anomaly because we don't really champion it. Right. We actually clown it. And we clown it in the sense of like a Big Sean. I think Big Sean is somebody who seems, who appears to have really navigated his career with some type of self-awareness and integrity. Right. Yeah. And I think it backfires. And I think it was on full display with his interview with Charlemagne the God. Mm. I think there was a lot to kind of tap in. And now there's some things that we could laugh at and joke at and all that shit. But I think him as a person, he always keeps that at the forefront whenever I hear him speak. Right. The person of Sean Anderson. Mm -hmm. And like you said, in this industry, people don't want to hear that. People want to hear the slaps. Yeah. People want to be a part of the, you know, the messy stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to see that there are still people like a Sean or like a hot spot mm -hmm. that working within mm -hmm. this industry. That's that is nothing to really just we have to pay attention mm -hmm. to that. We yeah. must highlight that. That must be saluted. Yep. That's Real why talk. I've always loved Big Sean. Even though I'm not saying every album and every song that I've loved, he has definitely dipped low in terms of like music quality in my opinion like he's released some stuff that has like not done well yeah but i've always loved him because like whatever he did it really did feel like that's what he wanted to do at the time like he didn't really do inauthentic shit mm -hmm. and he's had a long career but yeah. i don't know i'm excited for his new album though i don't know they kind of the two of them kind of give me i made this up by the way so mm -hmm. don't coin me but i call it like the million dollar theory right mm -hmm. and us as people especially in the united states of america we have this theory that if we reach a million dollars or if we, because, you know, a million dollars is like the moniker of success now, right? Yeah. You're a millionaire now. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people who feel like, okay, if I hit a million dollars, I made it. Now I can be happy. As opposed to the other people like, no, like me being myself, me waking up and being happy with the things I agree with, the things I align with is what makes me rich. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, it's really... That was really, I'm still taking it back a little bit. I'm like, nigga, anybody would have been like, nigga, clear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they would have forgot this no, side. It, it wasn't even like a reason of, of like, oh, like, you know, I, I don't want to do it. His reason was, no, I want to make it safe for the kids to wrap yeah. along to. I don't want them to feel bad, um, cussing a little bit. And he said that it was just be, very honorable. And he said something that was really cool, right? He said it would be cool, good for both of their brands. Yeah. Right? We've had discussions here about, uh, what maybe sex, the sexy reds and the ice spices have done to the youth and, you know, what they add or what kids pull from that. So to see someone who's like, you know what, even if I'm not as big as these artists, I can help them still translate over and the kids could still enjoy these artists. Yeah. And still get now, I want to be clear. I'm not holy to now. I love when they be talking about pussy and all that other shit. <laughs> I'm not about to sit here and act like I'm, I'm Jesus. Oh, yeah, we're not saying that. We're no, not we're not that. saying that. I want to be very clear here. But... It's good to see that, you know what, we can still make secular music yeah. and it still be okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, that's one of the reasons why. Yeah. And we, we played the song on the podcast before, mm -hmm. but um, me, is it Me and You or Only You by Thames? I can't remember the song. Me and uh, You. Is it, it's Me and You? Yeah. Me and You originally had Drake on it. And that song, uh, Tim's premise, yeah. the message is her and God, talking about God, her spirituality, whatever. <laughs> what Drake did. And then Drake got on a song and started talking about... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh, wait, good point. Wait, oh, wait. Good point. Bleep, yeah, yeah. bleep that. I can't say the B word. <laughs> oh my god! Can't huh? say the B word. Yes, you can. No. So, bleep it. But it was Drake talking about him and his women. Yeah. Relations yeah. with women. Okay? Yeah. Lovely young ladies. All right. Um, so yeah, she took Drake off of the song. And I think that was one of his best verses in years. Yeah. Like we yeah. know what Drake does with that type of vibe. That was good. Mm -hmm. We know what Drake does with that type of vibe. Mm -hmm. And for her to be like, you That's know what? I'm gonna pull Drake off of this song because his messaging isn't align mm -hmm. with the song with what i want this song to be mm -hmm. i'm gonna take it off so we've seen like other people do this maybe that wasn't such a big story yeah where people yeah. know that drake was on that song and mm -hmm. he was taken off yeah. but it's not the first time that somebody said you know what drake slow down bro yeah. your messaging is not really aligned with where i want to go so mm -hmm. i'm gonna pull you off and, and i think that goes back to having a soul yeah. justin timberlake versus jc yeah do no. math no <laughs> Say, well, that was such a, that was such a 
perfect <laughs> example that you just. But oh you my gotta, god, that was perfect. The Thames. Dr- oh, sorry, that was just no, that so was good. Great. That was so good. No, that was, that was that, no. You killing, bro? I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, killing, bro. I got you. <laughs> and, and the other thing too is like it, Drake. I, I'm assuming mm-hmm. is so used to getting whatever he wants or a little yacht. Yeah, like I was, was just saying. about to say that. Yes, so when you. somebody Damn, puts a so roadblock point. in front of you like that, like. It, being used to, uh, yo, I'm gonna just get whatever I want. Like you're just gonna yes. do whatever you want. And uh-huh. even Mr. Hotspot said, I think Alex, you might be, uh, you might say this, um, you know, a few minutes, but I'm gonna take your point. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, grab uh, it, grab it, grab it. <laughs> he basically said, hey, Mr. Hotspot basically, said, yo, Paul, I mean, uh, partner left. Did he say grab it? My yeah, fault. That's what he said. <laughs> Guys, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> he was about to make a Mr. Nice Hotspot point. said, grab it, grab it, grab it. My fault. <laughs> grab it. Yeah, not after Diddy. We can't say <laughs> no, 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 certain no, no, shit after don't, Diddy. Don't even say that. Privy. <laughs> sorry. Privy. Sorry. My fault, Pete. Nah, really get it off this time. We promise. Okay. Mr. Hotspot at the end said, yo, like, all right. Mm-hmm. Damn, y'all niggas, like, you're doing a lot? All right, bet. If you just make sure that it's, like, clean, I'm going to yeah. let you rock. Right, which is what he was saying. He yeah. would re-record a clean version, and they right. still were like, and Lil Yachty was, it was, honestly, the more I think about it, it's so disrespectful. It's like, OD. yo, I gave you a solution to sample my song. And Lola Yachty's like, fuck that. Here you go, Kais, and I'll play it. Like, that was, that's just so, like, what are you, like, why? And, and not for nothing, it alludes to the vulture point that people have made about not only Drake, but Lil Yachty. I, I know a lot of people aren't really super familiar with Yachty's catalog, but he's made some turns. <laughs> I've seen Yachty get with the Detroit rappers, do a Detroit tape. I've seen him get with the sexy drill, do sexy drill shit, which is fine. Like music is meant to collaborate. And do like the super experimental shit. Yeah, and just yeah. do super experimental shit. Oh, okay, I'm going over there with James. What was that? James Blake he did that with? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was James Blake he did yep, that yep, with. Yep, yep. Okay, let me pivot over here with James Blake. And it's like, okay, cool. I, I know you want to be a part of certain genres and, and new vibes, new music and things of that nature, but are we going about these things the correct way? Or like Pierre said, are we just doing things because we're just so accustomed to getting our way? I think he's. I think he knows exactly what he's doing because Lil Yachty is not new in this industry. He's been in it probably like a decade close yeah, to. Yeah. So he knows exactly what it what it feels like to to sample someone and then essentially not no. give them what they're worth. And him and Hotspot exactly are doing. both from Atlanta. But it's yeah. just it's, it's a respect thing because you wouldn't do that to Jay Z and then expect Jay Z. You couldn't do that to Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, you could. Nah. You could. You could try. Oh, you could try. You could try. Okay, you could try. You could take a Jay Z sample and send yeah. it to Kai Sinai and yeah. think like, but it's just a respect thing. Clearly, like there was a lack of respect for yeah. that creator, for that artist, for whatever the reason may be. Maybe he felt like he was doing him a favor, but not everybody looks at all favors as favors. Yes, money right. does not it, sway it, everyone. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was a great, great point or, yeah. or, or example of just seeing like again, some niggas just be out of touch. When you are the breadwinner of your family, when you are the person who has elevated your generation or the the, the friend group around you to success, a lot of people don't check you. A mm-hmm. lot of people don't tell you no, mm-hmm. right? So maybe he's also a victim of that. Nobody's probably telling Lil Yachty no or you shouldn't at do this, this point, or this right? ain't cool. Honestly, at in that point. exact interview, you said it was on Flagrant where he said yeah, this? Yeah, it was on Flagrant. Literally yeah. when he said, yeah, so I just gave it to Kai to, you know, play and leak it. And so, then and so the host, one, one host, I forgot who it was, but he was like, oh, that's smart. And I listened to it, I was like, no, that's not smart. That's disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. Like, so yeah. what's Savon was saying? They're, no one's checking him. Right, right. And if anything, even if he meant that in a sarcastic way, oh, that's smart. He's still not hearing that and be like, you know what? I need to be checked on what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. He said it so nonchalantly yeah. and casually, right? Yeah, like, he's like, yeah, I did that. It's yeah. cool. It reminds yo, me. He, yo, uh-huh. he fucking with God? It's all right. I gave it the caution and all that. Like, <laughs> like, bro, that's how it comes <laughs> off. You wouldn't do, you, you do that to Young Thug. You wouldn't, no. you wouldn't do that to 2 Chainz. You wouldn't do that to anybody else that's respected or that you respect in Atlanta. Right. So it's kind of like you, you, you almost pick and choose and I get it. You got a Drake song and that's dope. Mm. And we all appreciate it. But if I can't download it on Apple, I'm sorry. It's not really moving the needle. Yeah. Like, if I can't go outside and really listen to it with the quality that I want to hear it with, yeah. like, yeah, you did something by maybe proving a point, but did you really do something but just show, like, show, who, yeah. who, who you are? Like, it was just corny to me. It was and, corny. And, and, and the financial piece um, that Alex was mentioning, it reminded me of a quote that um, I live by to this day. It says, some people are so poor, all they have is money. So if money Damn. is your end all, be it to all happiness, like, there's a good chance that like you're not really happy internally. Damn, you're gonna make me get that tatted, bro. That was deep. <laughs> shit. <laughs> nah, that was deep. I don't even know when he pulled that shit for me. I got you, like you twin. It's, like like twin. it's like the Bob Marley quote. quote what is it? Like, uh, I have riches. My riches in life. No, oh, I, I yes, fucked it up. Yes, no, you're saying nah, You can't cook. fuck it up on a Bob's gonna tell you. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said, he said, yeah the, the person said, you know, what do you find uh, of to be riches to you? He said, uh, why riches, eh? My, my, riches, my riches is, is life. life. My riches is life. <laughs> 
Shout out to the Jamaican. Job bless. Shout out to Vibes Cartel. And it's National Jamaican Day, right? Yes, it is. We're recording on National Jamaican Day. Now, real quick, an album we didn't get to last week. Uh, DJ Mustard, he Mm -hmm. put out Faith of a Mustard Seed. And, uh, of course, a week is going by, so the first week's numbers have been released. And, unfortunately, people are still crashing out over first week numbers. I get it, though. If I'm an artist and I'm, I was a part of the whole Not Like Us rollout and I was at the concert. And also, before I even go any further, his album was really freaking good. Like, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed his song with Vince Staple, Schoolboy Q, the joint with Quavo Rob 49, shit, even the joint with Travis. My favorite one on here might be the joint with Kodak Black. But, you know, these days, your album sales don't really compare to the quality of the music. Well, couldn't tell DJ Mustard that because uh, they posted that the album did about 18K. And as soon as he saw that, he, he tweeted, <clears throat> and I quote, I promise y'all, this ain't my words. <laughs> Even if y'all think it's A, it's not. <clears throat> Drake is the Malcolm X of white people. And academics, make sure you post Gordo. Again, Drake has two songs on the new Gordo album. Make sure you post Gordo's first week since Drake thought he did a thing with making him drop on the same day as me. Next tweet. These Drake bots are the nation of Drizlam. <laughs> <laughs> this niggas is fucking. He's going off. This niggas is fucking feet. Last tweet. The bots trying to fade me. Now. How do we feel about Mustard doing all of this after having such a successful few months? Like, Kendrick gave him such a runway that he'd even have to promote his album. I should, maybe he should have, though, right, with the 18K? <laughs> I, I don't know, because also... <laughs> How do we feel about this? I do think 18K... Yeah. You know, in this whole streaming... Like, yeah, your numbers it. so skewed. What, I'm not even going to get into that, but, like, yeah. it, is, it is a little low. But, like, even if he... I think this is a good case of, like, you don't have to acknowledge everything because some pe- people would have seen, oh, he did 18K, but if he did it crash out like this, <sighs> no one would have made it like a big thing, like made fun of his album sale. It would have, people would have kind of just moved on and listened to the <laughs> album, I feel like, in my opinion. Nah, like, I believe you. Nah, that's true. Nah, but what did he mean like by him, that? I feel like him doing this made it worse. Like, you know? <laughs> Nation of Drizlam is crazy. <laughs> the Drake, Drake is the Malcolm X of white people? <laughs> what is it? Let's, let's analyze that. What is, what are, okay, what, I, what do you mean Okay, well, that? let's analyze it, right? <laughs> Malcolm X was loved by the people. By, the, by, by, by black, black people. By black people, okay. So, Ben, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so he's... No, but like, why did he... It. No, this we nigga is just tight. He, 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 he mad. And it's all right. Like, <laughs> no, you're you, mad. Wait, so what upset. did that... Yeah, what did yeah. that have to... Okay, if... It, what he's saying is Drake is hella loved by white people. So, what does that have to do with Mustard's album? Maybe maybe he's trying to insinuate that Drake is sort of like... And again, Malcolm X wasn't... Sabotaging? Ever, I can't. I don't really want to hear yeah. how y'all break this down. <laughs> no, I'm intrigued. No, no, no. The hate is there. I think you got that out the way already, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to really understand like how I you don't t- think there's nothing to understand. It, it, I think he's just be. mad. I think he's just on his phone. He could have said Mike... Yo, he could have said... Martin Luther King. Why did he say Malcolm <laughs> X? Like, what the fuck? I don't, I, He's like I, their leader, like the white people's leader. The only thing I can think about is the Nation of Islam, right? They're, they're, <laughs> Drizlam. <laughs> no, Drizlam is crazy. But they're highly respected, right? Yeah, they're a religion, of course, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I think he's maybe trying to insinuate that Drake is a religion to some people. Oh, and, and they're, they're like, just they like, like stands go him. hard. Yeah, yes, that's why just... he mentioned act to God. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. see, we broke it down. And he's like emotionally <laughs> tweeting right now. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yo, nah, that's crazy. I ain't never seen nothing yeah, just like tweet that. Tweet through. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have anything for mustard, man. I didn't need. To I, see I don't it. know if I got anything for mustard, bro. Like, I didn't need to see this from him. Yeah, it's it's a it's a producer led album it didn't have a major single on yeah, it yeah. the one song that could have been a single isn't on it not like us i'm sure that would have <laughs> helped his streams his first week sales like yeah. you know like you said maybe he didn't feel like he had to do as much promotion because he has been so visible we seen him in the movie mustard on the beat the tag came back for the year like mm-hmm. so maybe he didn't put his best foot forward as far as the promotional and marketing aspect of it yeah. but also we know there's a cold war with drake and everybody else drake versus everyone else mm-hmm. when you made the song not like us or when you allow Kendrick to make the song not like us you align yourself with Kendrick would put you against Drake right and so Naturally. now anything that's happening behind the scenes like we see artists from TDE their shit's getting canceled in uh Toronto yeah. right mm-hmm. like that's again it's all a a a um byproduct of the beef the aftermath of the beef and so this is just one of those things where it's going to get highlighted by mustard I mean by uh academics mm-hmm. because academics is riding for Drake mm-hmm. and Mustard was obviously riding with Kendrick in the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so it's, it's going to be mentioned. It's just a part of the culture. I think, yeah. like you said, he brings more attention to it by, crash, quote unquote, crashing out. Mm-hmm. But 
if it's a good album and it sounds good to you and it felt good to you when it came out, at this point, you're super uber filthy rich and you got yeah, the biggest sure. song of the year mm-hmm. still regardless. So tag on it. Just, keep it, just keep it pushing. But also, academic, I, he was mad at academics for like tweeting the album the sales album, as, yeah. as if, as if <laughs> as saying, if oh my God, academic, he's like making fun of me or whatever. Yeah. But also, but academics tweets everyone's album yeah. sales. That's true. So. That's true. That's so. true. He, he does, personal. but he put a little bit of sauce, <laughs> sauce on, on the people he don't really <laughs> fuck with. Oh, wait, what was the tweet? What was the tweet? <laughs> yeah. oh, no, I didn't see the tweet that academics uh, tweeted, but I'm sure he just said, hey, so-and-so dropped uh-huh. This year. Yeah. At the, one of the points that yeah. he made, which I thought was really interesting, and a lot of people, this is going to be the next phase of this aftermath, is people are going to be looking for Kendrick. And mm-hmm. so one of the points that Ack made was like, where's Kendrick to promote your album? Yep. Where's Kendrick when it's time for you to move your unit? Right. right? Like, Kendrick don't do that, though. Kendrick has never really done that. But he's when not an internet guy. He really don't. Yeah, he's not an internet with guy. Anybody. But you, yeah, with anybody. But you, you, you could, it's a fair assumption to say, hey, mm-hmm. You produced the biggest song yeah. of my career. Mm-hmm. I have an album that dropped three weeks after the song has been number one <laughs> yeah. for like the last six months, yeah, five like you, months. It's yeah. like, damn, you could at least toy to my you shit. You could like, throw me a bone, nigga. Yeah. Like, <laughs> throw me you, a bone, You could it. fucking just put it on nah, your story. Kendrick thought he was good. <laughs> like, Kendrick I was it. like, yo, I brought you. You had a whole set at the concert. I, I, I had it. you in the video. That was supportive, you know. Kendrick mm-hmm. thought he was good. But that's what I like. <laughs> and I then he saw it. And then Kendrick saw all the features. Oh my God, Kodak Black, Future. Lil Durk, Lil Thug. You know what it's it like? It was star study. It's like it's <laughs> like study. it's like when when I'm like, man, we just gotta promote the pod, guys. Let's just throw it on our story. Like you, it takes thirty, not even thirty seconds, yeah. to just post something on your story. And the beautiful thing about the story is it goes away. So it's not, it doesn't fuck with the aesthetic of your page. It's not, it's just supporting. It's too right? And you yeah. have all the eyes on you right now. Yeah. This could help me in the same way that I helped you. Yo, so here's- maybe. Throw it on your story. Mm-hmm. Here's what Axe said. Axe direct tweet. It says, DJ Mustard, quote, Faith of a Mustard Seed sells 18K first week. Period. That's it. That was not shit. He oh, does, come on, Mustard. He does that with, every, honestly, <laughs> yeah. academics does that with everyone's album. Yeah, like, that's sure. how he tweets it. I'll give it to him that. So. But you can you, you skip this week for me. <laughs> nah, we're nah. not skipping shit. Nah, you can skip this week for me. <laughs> and if anything, let it motivate you to put out some better, like, stuff. You but I mean? see, but like, see, that's my thing. It I been listened good. to it. The album was really good. It's, but, and also like it was really good. It's the Real climate. Talk. Like, it's, do yeah. we expect Mustard to sell a hundred thousand first week? We don't. No. And like I, yeah. nobody is selling records right now. Nobody, unless yeah. you're Travis Scott, Nicki Minaj. Drake, Nicki yeah. Minaj. Like I Spice, one like, of the hottest artists right now. She only sold like ten thousand more copies than Mustard. Right. Like twenty eight her first week, and she's yeah. everywhere. What you I, can't give her more marketing if you wanted to. Yeah. Like she has the <laughs> self marketing. Y'all play two K. I play two K. <laughs> yeah. You go on two K. You go to the pro am. You see I Spice. Everywhere, everybody's just ice spice this that. Like I don't know, <laughs> fuck. She's everywhere. Yeah, look at him. It's nothing more. Like it's nothing more you can do. And that only got twenty eight thousand. I can't avoid her. I can't. I can't. She's it's everywhere. Yes, man. What the fuck? She's everywhere. I close my eyes and I see her. <laughs> in I his, in his dreams. She's there. <laughs> she in it. Like, God damn it. So and, and that's what I hate it's about just the game. That's what I hate about first week sales too. They don't really quantize what how much it's gonna make. The next weeks or the coming weeks, and Definitely, then yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Like, and this is the crazy thing with sales all the for streams today. The project, yeah. Like nobody is buying anything. No, so we know all that. of the numbers and all of the streams and all of this is mm-hmm. fake. It's mm-hmm. manufactured, it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to sell a hundred thousand copies mm-hmm. and your mustard, mm-hmm. go give a million dollar back to your labels, and they'll put it in the box, <laughs> and they'll give you a hundred thousand on the charts. Allegedly, yeah. yeah. And I wonder. Yeah. I don't know the math, but what's the difference? Between, how how many units equate to a just, cop a copy? You know what I mean? Like it's all fabricated. It's, 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 like it doesn't every, matter. Every, bro, P, every DSP has a separate payout. So, so there's no uniformity. I don't, yeah, there's no like uniform. Yeah, 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 there's no uniformity in how to get paid from DSP oh. to DSP from Spotify to title to Apple Music. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but to your point, Zavon, right? Maybe the fans and no, I'm gonna put this on the artist first. The artist should have um they should have tough skin. Because I don't think the fans have necessarily really realized. Well, they have, but if you're a fan, you should know, yo, we not people not buying physical copies no more. Yeah. No, people I not think... just doing a hundred thousand no mm-hmm. more, right? You but, didn't have a single. I don't. What, what was the but single? But those are the fans that are making fun of the people online. Yeah, you know, again, you have tough I, skin. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think um, a few years ago we were like, oh my god, they only sold fifteen copies. In hand. Like we used to make fun of them, but yeah. now in twenty twenty four, I think we all have a good idea of like, you know what? No one's gonna put up big numbers anymore. The music savvy people. At I least, do. Right? I do think. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I do. I do think the common fan is kind of being like, oh wait, no one really puts up big numbers. I hope they get. And me, yeah. even the artists know better than everyone like yo no one is gonna put up like big numbers like that 
We all know this, but as an artist, it still stings, though. I'm sure Seeing it does. that number. But think, like, look at Sweetie. I mean... Don't do my you, like that. Nah, yeah. I wouldn't give a fuck about how my shit left. I'm just like saying, that. look at like, sweetie, I love you. Just, just look you got tough skin. I know she you don't. That shit so. No, 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 no. Honestly, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. With the way that people she don't drag crash her, she honestly, I don't care if people disagree. I, yeah. I think sweetie has tough skin. She'll no, always she pick does. herself back no, she, up. No, Bro, she do. Yeah, I was she went triple styrofoam. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. Three thousand copies first week no 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 for sure and she's still going double I love cardboard you. when i what i meant by soft skin i mean it looked like she used eucalyptus on her shit okay it looks supple all she's right glowing. that's what i meant oh wait she keeps going it's yeah. a lot of like and, look at troy and, yo, she has a great feet oh my i just went to ll cool j listen to party mm -hmm. you saw troy Ave? i did not see troy Ave. Uh, who did you see I, don't implicate me none of that <laughs> Sweetie is on one of LL Cool J's songs on it. Oh, that's what's up. And it's really good. Oh, oh, okay. Shout out to It's called Proclivities. It's really good. <gasps> Shout out to LL. Yes. yes, 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 yes. So I love Sweetie it. approval. Oh my. No, Reggie, it's good, good. Yeah, because they can never make me hate you, Sweetie. <laughs> I love you. But yeah, you know, a lot of these people don't have tough skin. How was the party? LL uh, Cool J. Hanging you know, out with LL. It's dope. Uncle L. I see him frequently over there at work. Yeah. But you yeah, know you on dope. like a first name basis? Nah, a little bit. You know, I'm about to sit here and lie. You know about face? I don't know. Because one thing about. Thing about L, like he's always like entertaining. Hey, what's up, baby boy? Are you good? <laughs> nah, yeah. So you know he's not really calling you by your name. Like, what's up, my boy? You good? Yo, yo, huh? don't disrespect like that. What happened? What she did? What she did? What? What? Ask that question again. Alex ain't here. I ain't here. What happened? Well, what I just say? said I wonder what his sign is. Capricorn. <laughs> that's oh, what, that's why you. Oh, that's why he, that's yeah, what don't don't like, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's, that's why you wanted to know. Guys, yeah, he has the same birthday as Savon. Yeah, don't disrespect. <laughs> ain't like I, he about his business. But, he gives yeah, me Sagittarius yeah. vibes. Relax. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, that's cool. You yeah. you ran into Elliot Wilson. How was that? I did. Uh, I don't know how he does it. Elliot Wilson is everywhere. Mm -hmm. We spoke about that too last time we talked about him. Well, at least I did. Um, he lives in Cali now, mm -hmm. but somehow I, he was telling me how people are still booking him for events in New York because mm -hmm. they think he still lives out here. I can see why they book him in New York events. I don't know how he does it though. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So it definitely does speak to how hard he's working. Like mm -hmm. he will literally leave LA, even though he has a weekly show with um. Oh my God, Jeremy didn't like when I didn't when I called him a white kid last time. Yeah, don't do that. To Jeremy. I didn't know his name. Don't my do fault, that Jeremy. My fault, Twin. Jay Heck, nigga. <laughs> that's twin. And that's how he should address you. Jay, oh, that's twin too. <laughs> yeah, everybody's twin. Everybody's twin. Yeah, like, I, like he I literally leaves the show with DJ Head and Jeremy in LA, and he'll be right in here in New York. Do this, fly right back yeah. out. To be in your fifties and still do that, that's impressive. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing that. Real talk. If I'm gonna have that same amount of drive. I don't know. I really like music though. I'm lying. I might. <laughs> I can see you doing that. I think I could do it. Because Elliot, he's clearly passionate. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's passionate. You know what I'm yeah, saying? He's, sure. he's clear. Like, that's not one of the things. Hosting mm. the LL event is not something that you're doing for like uh, public facing value, right? right. It's right. not, hey guys, look at what I'm doing. You do it because you love the sport. You yeah, 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 you yeah. love the sport. You love doing what you got to do. Right. And when somebody like an LL Cool J call you, like, of, of course you do. You're going to be there. So, yeah, for sure. See? So it was good to see you there too. You know, we everywhere, baby. I know. You know, I already know. <laughs> He's in promo mode. <laughs> Need to go. Needs to know mixer. Wait, but hold on, Savon. So I, it just clicked for me what you were saying in the beginning of the episode. Mm. When Alex calls you twin, you are not special. No, he hates it. Okay, I just okay, I, it just clicked because he call, he why you literally can't just join called us? a random person twin. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yo, yeah, well, that's why. Like, that, I have you are a not problem. special. Yeah, I have a problem with twin. It's a turn of endearment. It's not to me. Fuck it, take not to me. Yes. Again, it goes back to like if you call all of your girlfriends babe oh. or all your homegirls. Not my babe. girl though. I know. <laughs> not my girl though. Just let me call you twin. No. You not my girl. I bet. Though. Fuck I, it. I thought I'm, I meant more than you. You want me to call that. you boy, right? Yeah. I would appreciate your boy. What up, boy? Nah, your boy from Some the big show. Crazy. Boy. 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 Yeah. Boy. Yes. <laughs> uh, Reggie. Yes. We need your help. <gasps> Yes, please. We, oh, we, it is time. It's we time. need your help right now. Boy. Why? What I do? You love the game. Wait. Of journalism. Oh, okay. <laughs> I am like, what are you talking oh, about? No, 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 not the rapper. Uh, she loves the game. Yes, yeah, no, she loves journalism. <laughs> that nigga got another kid on her. I, oh, I hate the shit, game. Hold up. You being messy. I ain't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga. That nigga gay. Nah. So, I think me and gay. No, mom. Yo, what the <laughs> fuck? I knew you were going to say, bro. What was I going to say? That's your Eskimo twin. Yeah. Oh, shit. I How say, you say that? I ain't say Eskimo, brother. You say Eskimo. Eskimo ah, twin. Okay. I see, see that? You <laughs> see? Y'all got more in common than you I know. I think. I don't know. You see? I have no idea. Reggie. Yes. Um, I saw some big mistakes from Complex this week. Yes. Huge. Did you see it as well? Can you break it down for us? I did see. So the main story at hand is Kai Sinat 
was breaking down crying when he confirmed that his videographer that helped him start, you know, his whole collective, he was really instrumental in his journey, Chris V, Mm -hmm. right here? Uh, Yes. Chris V, it was confirmed that, you know, he was sexting underage girls and, you know, Kai Sinat was really reacting to that. That's that's a clip that kind of went crazy. So Complex picked that up. I believe I'm like 80% sure it was like a weekend writer. Like it was, it was uploaded on the weekend and they put in their article, they incorrectly named Chris V as Chris next door, which is a completely other person, which is, he's a part of the AMP crew. Yes. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. they're both named Chris. They're both in yeah, yeah. Kai you know, crew. So the big story over the week was Kai Sinat was reacting to um, him finding out that a videographer that he was very, very close with, he started his journey with, his name is Chris. He was reacting to the confirmation that Chris was sexing underage girls, just like just doing very inappropriate things that would really hurt his brand, everybody's brand, and obviously the party involved. And it was a pretty emotional clip. Kai was like, why am I always roped into this? It was a big story, a big viral clip. And Complex picked that story up. And instead of just naming his him as Chris, they called the person Chris Next Door, which is a completely different person who was not involved in, you know, sexing underage girls or any of this. And the part that people are kind of freaking out over, obviously you can't, that, that could ruin someone's image off bat. And what makes it worse is like, the worst part of it was like, people reached out to Complex from Chris Next Door's team, like, hey, you got to correct this, you got to make this right. And they did not correct it for hours. And they also used a picture of Chris Next Door. So it was just a whole story over the weekend. This is so weak. Yeah. And honestly, like popcorn journalism. Popcorn, explain. I think it's popcorn journalism. Oh yeah, just Explain. grabbing the story really <laughs> I think quick. Something you just see something, you uh-huh. put it out for and, mm. and and people pick it up. It's popcorn journalism. I don't think again, that's why uh, Elliot Wilson is so important when it comes He's to reporting on yeah. things, is because he is a journalist in his respect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm. A moment like this is just popcorn journalism. People yeah. just mm-hmm. want the moment, people just want the clicks, people aren't familiar. And it's also a lesson to be l- learned here for Kai. He keeps finding himself with his affiliates dragging him into something. It was a story it's a tough. few years ago where I think there was a sexual assault. Girl at a party type yeah, thing. Yeah, with one of his clo- uh, friends at the time, whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's always people around him. Kai Sinat, everybody can't go. Like, and you need to start part, looking around. And I know. Like black people specifically, when you get some success, you want to bring everybody with crew. you when you're young and mm-hmm. you feel like you owe it to them and there's mm-hmm. loyalty. And yes, to some degree, but you got to be able to kind of weed that shit out and, and everybody can't go. I'm, I shouldn't know who Chris V is. I shouldn't know who Chris Next Door is. I should know who Kai Sinat is because you are the driving force in it. But them niggas, I shouldn't even know who they are. Well, hold on now. Chris, I think it's important to highlight that Chris Next Door is an AMP member. If you right. guys don't know what AMP is, mm-hmm. that is Kai Sinat's group. That's the problem. Kai Sinat shouldn't have a group. You see what ASAP Rocky did? Had kids with Rihanna? Where them niggas at? The kids? The mob. No, ASAP. The ASAP mob. Where them niggas at? Look at oh, oh, okay, hey, the Before we go, he got, we seen Tyler the Creator. He got, he, got, he got low from the mob. Where we, them niggas at? Way before. Nah, bro. They have their own individual thing. Yeah, because everybody can but, go. But who's to say that A&P can't do the same? Yeah, it's two different yeah, mediums. Like they're gonna, right now, they're building, right? And then they can break apart like those groups did, right? At one point, though, they were groups. What, but why, did they, <laughs> why, why do people... And we don't know the specifics. And I just no, we kind of do. Yeah. I could give you the specifics. For everybody? Like, like the cameraman... That's why I really it's it's tough. Like the one before with his friend, like all right, cool. That's the dude you came up with. So you, again, to your point, hey yo, everybody can't go. Videography, he met along the way. Mm-hmm. So if anything, if if I'm we're business owners, mm-hmm. if we freaking hire the videographer, we're doing it on some business shit. Mm-hmm. We're hoping he's not a part of some nasty bullshit, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with that one, I'm like you know what, I could, I would be really annoyed if I was Kai with that. But in terms of he has a group, Phantom. I shouldn't know your videographer. I don't agree. Nah, I, like, I should have known you know, having, having a team and making it with your team is very important. But, but, but if there are problematic people in there, kick them out immediately. But yes. you got to know when you are the one, like he is the one. I get so it. So he cool. should abandon everybody? Yes. But no, they I don't all, agree. But they, don't yes. agree. But they all okay. vet them. Make sure you are protecting You're yourself. No, bro. Because again, it keeps happening to you because you don't have this infrastructure in place. Again, and I don't know how deep these friendships go if they grew up in the sandbox, but even the niggas in the sandbox got to go. But you got to know when you are the one. And when you're the one, nobody else is going to protect you from that. Because if he was thinking about anybody outside of himself, he would say, you know what? I'm affiliated with Kai Sinat. Maybe I shouldn't do this. 
I think it doesn't I, work like that. That's what I was about to say. It, I think it's not gonna work like that. I think we take for granted how difficult it is to do content <laughs> by yourself. Yeah. I, I like we really and, take that shit for granted. It is not yeah. easy to do. And that that uh, hold on, people. No, okay, 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 okay. That room you always saw Kai Sinai streaming in, that was a whole house. Yep. With it all wasn't of them just, living in. It wasn't just him. I don't know. If people, everybody just, can't go. Okay, but say everybody about, like, can't he, go, but, but they Kai's, already went. But Kai Sinai, he he can't do this alone. Yeah. Like he did not do this alone. It's like it's like need to know podcast. Let's say, you know, people are taking a liking to you, Savon, you're just gonna leave us. No, it's different. <laughs> it, it, I think I think it's a little bit different in How? a sense because he did not do this alone. Like there was a journey of a camp of they them, came together. and I agree. Like this problematic person, this person that was sexting underage girls, he has to go. He yeah. like bye. We're never speaking to you. Cut ties. Look, but all right, as now, a team, look, now, now we're here, right? Because let's let's give him grace. He's young. He's growing. He's new to fame. Mm -hmm. All of this. He didn't inherit fame, right? So cool. I'll give him that. Now that we are here, and it's the second, third, however many times something like this has happened, what does he do moving forward, right? Because now you, you this, it can't keep happening. Mm -hmm. you, have have to more protect, you have to protect yourself at some point. So For I don't sure. know if yeah. it's saying, yo, but let I, me go through your phone. I, I think don't those know are two what separate, that looks like. But I think those are two separate points. Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's not. I just, okay. I agree. It okay. is two separate points. Yeah, yeah. But now that we are here, you have to insulate yourself. Because at the end of the day, that group doesn't mean anything without him. No. And yeah, that's yeah. the leverage you of. You got to do more nah, research, you, bro. You gotta. I don't. I don't, I don't know if you as tapped in. Yeah, you're not that tapped. That's okay. I had to get tapped myself. The youngest put me on. I, I, look, the whole, bro, they the will whole fade idea. into nothing without Kai Sinai. It's not true. They might be cool right now. It's not true. It's just like all of the fucking ASAP Phantom, members. Phantom, Phantom, Phantom has a Phantom has a Nike deal the yeah. same way Kai Sinat does. Phantom, for now, Phantom, Duke, Phantom brought Kai into the whole AMP. For now, bro. Duke Dennis is older than them. I think he's in. I think he's thirty. Okay, and I'm not saying. <laughs> all right, you know I'm, what not I'm saying, saying like, they won't, I won't. I'm not saying they won't be successful, but we all know that Kai Sinat is the one. So if okay. he were to say, yo, I'm done with y'all, I'm doing my own thing, yes, all of them are in a position where they can survive and they can succeed, wait, wait, but wait, none wait. of them will have the spotlight hold on, hold on. that they have on them without Kai being close to them. Yeah, but Again, look at our future. Again, look at ASAP. It's, two, like, it's different You mediums. do need the one that is the one, and then it's they, everybody else. But were they not a group <laughs> at first, each of those groups? Yes, they were. So that's what I'm saying. That's what they're doing right now. They're in that stage. I'm not saying one day they're not going to split again and... Okay, we're all big enough to do this shit independently. Yeah, I want to go back to Chris real quick. My fault, Pierre. The reason why this bothered me so much is Chris next door, he minds his business. He's a part of that A&P conglomerate. And also, he doesn't have as much money as a Kaisenot. So when you demean his character the way you do with this, it kind of hinders his potential to, for growth or his potential to get away from a Kai Snot, et cetera. Like, bro, I get Kai Snot is the popular one, but bro, these are all men. These are all individual people who also find themselves to be a talent and entertaining. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Kai Snot is not their daddy. Like, what kind of shit and, is that, bro? And this infraction <laughs> didn't have anything to do with the, the AMP members. Right. It was him so being stupid why would on he his leave, own. Right. Why would he leave the members, the members if, it, if this, none, none of the infractions that have been mm -hmm. associated with Kai have been with the members, mm -hmm. necessarily. And two, the whole AMP collective. So the, the thing that I, I, I love the younger generation for understanding is that you go further together. So if Kai was just like, you know what, I'm going to just bounce. Cool. Yeah, he, he could probably be, um, you know, popular and, and he, he'll grow. But and wasn't he independent before? Together, yeah, but he started off streaming uh, Dolo, but his profile didn't rise is, is, until is, he was with everybody else. That's a great is, point, Pierre. Is, is Kevin Hart doing the AMP freestyle if Kai Sinai's not there? I don't know. That's what that's what it it matriculated into. Kai, but <laughs> if Kai Sana is not a part of AMP, mm -hmm. is Kevin Hart doing that freestyle that he did a few weeks ago? Okay, but Kai Sana wouldn't be, right. be like in that status that <laughs> Kevin Hart loves without his whole crew that haven't streamed we, together for years. Just told How you. many times have I seen Kai Sana go viral, create news stories, Save and on. I don't see nobody else near him? Kai Sana is the one. Because Why you're we not. I'm not saying they didn't contribute, but they don't. Matter when it comes to Kai Sinat. God, do you He research, matters bro. more. I don't. I see it. I know more, every time Kai Sinat so does clear, anything with an artist. More important to you. Right? No, I, bro. You can go on Complex Save right on. now and go look at Save all on. of the times they posted about Kai Sinat. Save it's on. never they, AMP. It's Kai Sinat. Complex has a deal. Who was on the Complex a, list? Was Save it on. AMP at number three? Or was it Kai Sinat? Savon, there are streamers that listen to the other members that like them more than Kai. I'm not saying that but that's, they don't but, exist. That, but that's the point I'm trying to make to you. You need to highlight that point. And so, yeah, he could be the most identifiable. We know that already, yeah. my nigga. Come on. What we okay. talking about? What we talking about is, yeah, he cool, but Pierre just told you, 
we know him be, when he started to join the crew. Bro, all these things, all these clips you see in the Kasanat, that wasn't when he was Dolo. And, it's when he joined them. Mm -hmm. So and, maybe you might not see the content where they mm -hmm. link up and do shit, but they do. They and do the, a reason, lot. the reason why Complex was always posting him on, on IG is because they they have business date. Well, they had business mm. dates together. Oh, I got played up. So that's the whole reason why everything he did, everyone he was, who he was with, um, Complex pushed that because it pushes more clicks on their website, more clicks um, on everything that they're doing. So that's why they always had that. Uh, again, I, I, I'm not as tapped in, so I'm not gonna speak. We know to he's them. the biggest guy. I just know he yeah, yeah. he's yeah, the we one. Know. We don't. And we we know no, I know. But when you're the one, you gotta move like, and you gotta put the infrastructure yeah, yeah, in place. Yeah. And now that you're at this point, you have to learn that everybody can't go. And I'm not saying everybody can't eat because everybody can eat in their own corners. I think ASAP Mob being a, a great example. We see some of the other ASAP uh, members doing better than others. Some are, like at the but highest they were level once ever. Rock, a group, they right? were, but I'm saying at some point, <laughs> that's what we're you saying. gotta identify when you're the one. And you gotta you 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 have to put the infrastructure in place unless you're gonna allow other people to be your downfall. I think there's a way for you to still be the guy and for other people to eat. Like I, I think it's kind of corny to just be like, oh yeah, I'm the biggest it's guy. Like, Fuck yeah. all you niggas. Okay, yeah. this reminds I would me not do that, my brothers. Like what? this reminds me a lot of RDC World. <laughs> oh, oh, he's great. The one guy, no, but it's like the one guy. He's the face of it, yeah, but yeah. it's a group. It's their channel. Sure. It's like every like, like we he, know he's the guy. He needs them. Like yeah. he needs them. But also like I I agree with Savon's point of like. When you're really like bursting through these levels of fame, you're not just like a local celebrity anymore. You have to move with more discernment. And the phrase everybody can't go is true. Yeah. But like, I'm not saying like, I think in the beginning of the conversation, it came across as like, yo, you should like ditch the group that you started with when you're the star. Where it's yeah. like not, I know that's not what you said, but in the beginning, yeah. I feel like that's what we were like trying to like be like, no. And, but and, yeah. and that's, that's insulation. All, that's of, all, of, mm -hmm. all of Kai, all of Kai's like being comes across as, yo, I'm helping out my friends. Um, you know, that's why we love even him. Even if you look at like Tyleel, only one nigga could eat. Damn, like, it's no. a whole thing. <laughs> Everybody could eat, but he has to be protected. That's yeah, a fact. For sure. But they, one yeah, person yeah. needs to be protected. For that's sure. a, but I promise you, if something happens to Kai, they're still going to eat, bro. I know. I said everybody oh, I can eat. No, nah, yeah, it's fine. Everybody can eat, and everybody is eating. Yeah. But everybody also needs to know and identify, like, oh no, we need to collectively make sure this man is protected. For sure. I can't move a certain way in my personal life because I'm associated with him. No matter how big and how great you're doing, that doesn't take away from the fact that he is the driving force. That's my, all I'm my, saying. My thing is, if, like, if the group he came with, uh, the, the A&P, right? If it was a collection of all niggas he came up with from the Bronx, I'm hearing what you're saying, bro. You're saying, yo, this is big business. I'm the guy. Bro, these guys are from different states. Mm -hmm. They collectively came together on purpose to help each other. Yeah. You see what I'm saying now? I see what you're saying. It's not the like a just, it's just like it's not some hood niggas that was on the block from the Bronx. I right, bet I flew them out to Atlanta and I'm the guy and they just mooching off me. Nah, it ain't like that. Mm -hmm. I had to learn too. Yeah, everybody puts in, everybody streams, everybody usually pretty much puts in work. Yeah. And whenever Kai has his streams, he brings his friends from the Bronx, Punga, Talil, everybody. And then he also brings in Ray and everybody else from the AMP house. So it's it's a that, again for yeah. me that's what I love they understand like yo it's gonna take all of us to you know to get this. to somewhere because look at the power he has as to even the reason why he could do all that with complex even now like yo complex it's over like wait let's play that real quick and we can get out of here because I do want to hit well, I want you to hear how angry Tavon, he was. don't forget your point yeah I had the nerve to put out a false article about one of the A and P members and all you had to do was do thirty seconds of research hey bro listen to me Chris next door ain't do shit. He's not part of any situations. He ain't do shit. He's one of the quietest. When you talk about Chris next door, he's literally minding his business. He don't do shit. He has yet to even come on y'all platform. He has yet to even do a lot of shits within his personal lane, my nigga. So for y'all niggas to do that is absolutely crazy. And I know we have a lot of shit that we were supposed to do in the future, Complex. There's a lot of shit that y'all wanted me for. Uh-oh. I'm going to mm. go ahead and cut that tie right there, bro. Back to hot spot. That's how, that's how bad More the mistake rules. was. Yeah. More rules. Any other person would be like, yo, like, I'm not going to fuck up my complex shit for this. Nah, it, it's different when you're the leader and you know you're going to get it regardless. And we're the driving factors. Mm -hmm. the, companies are not, not, the company's not the driving factor. It's us. Mm -hmm. You feel I me? Mean? When you keep that at the top of your mind, you always going to have a job. You're always going to have a situation. Honestly, he got the leverage. Company, yeah, sure. companies sure. need us more than we need them, honestly. Yeah. Got, That's he, what I learned as a freelancer. Sure. He, he has a leverage. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I get it. It's noble to say fuck complex if I'm casting out because I'm standing on moral high ground. But he has a leverage. He makes more money than Complex probably does as an entire fucking entity. So 
I don't give him points for saying, oh, I'm not fucking with y'all because y'all got this wrong because y'all didn't do your job. Hold on, hold on. A lot of people made a big deal about the complex list this year and last year. Let's not do that. So Uh, I know a lot of people who would want to keep their relationship very good with a complex in in anticipation of the next year. He don't need it. I know he don't need it. What I'm saying is he don't care about it either. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Damn. Nobody fucked this up for us. You know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, what I was saying, like, it's, it's, it's true. Like what yeah. he was saying about like, yo, when you see that you're associated with like a Kai Sana or whatever, like right. you should, as a friend, you should be like, no, I have to come correct. I'm representing him now. For right. sure. And for you to be acting crazy is, damn. that's why it hurts so much. The, yeah. the clip of Kai Sana crying over this. Cause mm-hmm. it really hurts. It's like, bro, like you see what we're trying to do and you're out mm-hmm. here doing this crazy shit. Like why? Let's that's why I don't leave my house. No, you gotta leave Cause house, I think man. of y'all. Except for if August I was leaving, 17th. If I was leaving my crib all the time yeah, and drinking and doing all the like, wild shit, like, I can't be a bad representation of y'all. It's only my crib. Let's go back to it's everybody love. can't go. Uh, Dame Dash. Dame Dash uh, is 33.3 uh, stake in Rockefeller Records is set to be auctioned off later this month. After the record executive failed to pay on an $823,000 settlement two years ago. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, long story short, he has to pay some money back. Why this is so interesting? If you guys know anything about Rockefeller hip hop, all of that shit, it was Biggs, Jay Z, and Dame Dash. Of course, eventually they split. Jay Z was like, "Yo, Leo, what up?" <laughs> Dame Dash didn't respect it. We've heard the story a plethora of times. If you all you got to do is type in Dame Dash on YouTube right now, and it now, comes up. And it comes up. <laughs> you don't even got to type in anything else. Just type in Dame Dash. He gonna give you the rundown of how about how that went down. And for the last, I guess, twenty over the twenty years now, people always assumed him keeping his portion of Rockefeller was really out of pettiness, you know, and out of spite. And I just, it's just so reminiscent of me remembering when he visited the Breakfast Club. And called Envy a worker. <laughs> and how Damn. Envy had to listen to what he was told. <laughs> For the last two years, uh, Dame hasn't had the money to pay back the lawsuit that he lost. So now the government is forcing him to share, I mean, to, uh, to auction off, uh, you know, probably his biggest asset left. The Rockefeller shares. The Rockefeller shares. And the first thing that came to my mind is, shit, we're an all an employee to someone, huh? Even when we think, hey man, I'm a freelancer, I'm doing this, I got yeah, but there's someone that could really supersede what you're doing if it got there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I never saw that coming in. Also, too, I want I'm curious to see who's um who wants to buy it. I think the minimum is like a million dollars. Are there um yeah like perspectives that are like concrete? You know, there's like a lot of rumors, and they were saying, like, oh my god, he might sell to Kendrick Lamar, Mm -hmm. like but like, are there any serious updates on that? Well, it's Not, going to an auction now. Yeah. So oh, now okay. it's going to go to the highest bidder. Damn. Yeah. Who's gonna, who, whoever the highest bidder is, we'll get yeah, it. And that could be somebody from tech. It could be Drake. Let me talk to my accountant. Hip-hop. Yeah, like it could be us. Drake. <laughs> oh, shit. Reggie. Could it? We got to talk to the accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not us. But nah, yeah, yeah, I mean. If I had to pick two people, though, maybe Jay-Z and Drake are first two on that list for me. In no, terms I, of who I think it's going to be somebody who's just a fan of the culture who got the money to do it. Oh, like Remember some Martin white man. Screlly? Really? Remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mar- Martin Screlly who had the Wu-Tang yeah, for sure. um, do we, album. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's just going to be somebody like that Behov- who has the money. Behov has wanted to buy it for him for years. He has? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Hov I has wanted. I, actually, they've been to court and Hov oh. has tried to get force him to be like, yo, he needs to you know, sell that. Mm. Damn, now. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I could definitely see a third party, maybe a Jason to Hov or mm-hmm. shit. We know Drake is co- uh, collecting rap memorabilia now, right? I, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if any two, one of those two people, they got the money. I don't know. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest, like, I don't really give a fuck. Because, it's, <laughs> like, and, and not that I don't give a fuck about the topic. No, I don't. Dream. But it's more like, so. Like, who winds up with the shares? Yeah, it, it's just, yeah. It, I think the biggest story is the position that Dame Dash is in. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the biggest story. I, you know what I'm saying? For so, sure. when I say I don't give a fuck, it, yes, of course, we give a fuck. But the fact that he's in this position knowing what he stood for and what he's fought for for all of these years i think it's just interesting Very and interesting. it goes back to justin timberlake versus jc mm-hmm. to me 
it's always like a, a perception of mm -hmm. good versus evil or compromising your morales versus not. Even going back to the conversation with Lil Yachty and Mr. Hotspot, mm -hmm. there's always two sides of the coin. And I know Dame Dash has been on the side of one and trying to fight and put out a certain message. And I know the portrayal that Jay-Z has been looked at and, and the light that, you know, being an industry elite comes with. Right. So I think that is the story when I see something like this. Yeah. More so than who's going to buy the Rockefeller one third of Rockefeller because nobody's checking for Rockefeller. I think the the, the most valuable um, asset in this is reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. Yeah. Right. Which, of course, hip hop fucking royalty, royalty. legacy. For like sure. Jay Z debut album. Like, of course, it's a thing. But. You know, the, the allure of Rockefeller is no longer existent outside of what it was in the past, right? There's no Rockefeller uh, record label today. There's no Rockaware today. There's still none of that today. Chains. Yeah, they still, little Uzi, they got Fab, chains. Yeah, we got you. But even when I see a Rockefeller chain on Lil Uzi, like, come mm. on, we watering it down. We watering the product now, in my opinion, right? Like, what the Rockefeller chain was, was a moment. And now, if everybody could just get one because they're a part of Rock Nation, does it still even have that value? So. Nah, if I'm Rock Nation, give me a chain, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, guys. Can we get need to know chains? <sighs> it just got to sound fly, though. <laughs> oh, why the silence? No, 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 because nah, I'm with it. I, said, oh, I got I excited. I thought you guys were like rolling nah, your eyes. No, 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 no. I got excited. Yeah, no, nah, we can do it. It just got to sound fly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gotta be a cool, it's gotta be a really cool design too. It can't just be like NT. Yeah, it can't be some wax <gasps> shit. I like simple chains. Me too. NTK, you want it to be like an elaborate design? Nah, nah some, some sim no. simple but like some cool at the same time. It's cool. Yeah. But yeah, Alex, when you were like reading that story, it's just like so crazy to see that we have witnessed a complete timeline. Like Great point. Rockefeller. I mean, I'm not gonna act like I was fucking you know. We were young. Old when yeah. like Rockefeller was like yeah. running shit, but like just to see how it came to this, where now, boom. Dame Dash is being forced to sell his portion of Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. Wow. And like, to, we lived through, like, an era. No, honestly. And to the boss worker point, right? I feel like workers are always get such a bad rap, but do you want to be the boss of nothing or the employee of something? Mm -hmm. No? Ooh, oh, and I feel like that kind of takes precedent here. Whereas, all right, cool. I, I, I Salute to what Dame Dash has done in the last decade or, or decade plus, right? What has he done? He, I, he's created a, a TV <laughs> network, no? What's it called? Dame Dash Studios? <laughs> I don't know. I'm seriously I don't asking. Know. I ain't gonna, uh, nah, you said nah, you were you asking yourself. You had a homie over there. Why are you acting like you just I gonna just be asked what he, bro. So, You know what the studios is called? Your homie used to work over there. For sure. So what's it called? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't. I, don't I, I don't think I he knows. really don't. I bet. I know they've been giving game been for giving the last game. 10 years. Right, but that's kind of yeah. my whole point about doing that. What, he's doing a rock band. Right. He did a rock band. <laughs> No, for real. No, I know. He has like a 24-hour TV network or something going on. Like, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the show. I think he's uh, created a ton movies? of movies. Yeah. Now, what's the name <laughs> on it? Payton Full on his on his shit. Okay. Really? That's what it's on? Yeah. Belly uh -huh. 2 on there. Damn. Wow, okay, okay. Not one. Oh, Belly 2? Oh. I'm dead ass. You can look it yeah, up right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nah, I don't know. It's just... <laughs> it's crazy, like yeah. Reggie said, to see the full... Right? It's the full thing, right? Yeah, You're right. Because yeah, now yeah, it's like, sure. all right, cool. You always stand on being a boss, being a boss, and doing what you want, and doing what you want, but... The last 20 years, us, the general public, we haven't necessarily seen what you've really done outside yeah. of Rockefeller. Man. So it's like, all right, cool. You could run with that boss call, boss call, and I get it. But at least there's some people that's okay with being employees and, and say, uh, maintaining and surviving and being there for their family. So It like played out better. It did. It did. Damn. Yeah. Salute to all the bosses and workers. Well, shout out to Dame Dash, too. Oh, yeah. Big shout for out sure. to Dame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I don't sure. want to get it misconstrued. No, no, no. Just because be... I don't know what's going on with his TV network <laughs> yeah. or his rock band. Like Dame has contributed way too much to hip hop, way Absolutely. too much. Like it, it goes so far back yeah. to where I don't even know if I'm able to get a job in the music industry if it wasn't for Dame Dash just because of the domino effect and the impact that he had, mm. right? Mm. All that he's influenced and contributed to the culture. So Absolutely. I, I do want to make sure. I know, nah, I know yeah, we joke around. I know, I don't really like cleaning <laughs> shit up like that. No, I know. But, get your mouth. you know, um, when, when it comes to Dame Dash, like I know what he did. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I just don't want nobody to hear this and be like, oh, these young, stupid fucking kids. Like, nah, right. like, nigga, I'm here to joke too. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what his fucking TV I hate when, network is. I, I hate but, when we be trying to joke and they take that shit serious. 
you. Take it very literal. I'd be like, yo, bro, I was joking. You ain't catching it. went over your head bro, like that, I swear, twin? like, I was dead ass joking about <laughs> Paul George last week. <laughs> no, bro. you wasn't. Like, yo, why do niggas like Paul <laughs> George, bro? There, like, what some, are we talking about, okay, bro? Okay, there's some moments where because it was clipped up for Instagram, I'm like, damn, they didn't get the context. But right, that, man. Savon, you were hating on Paul George. No, I was hating. <laughs> you, were, you were like, they don't watch basketball. Why do you think Paul George is good? My hate was in like 4K. <laughs> they all said, yo, kids don't watch basketball. Yeah. They don't. And I still stand yes, on they that. Do, I still stand on kids don't. I think they watch 2K it. influences. They watch kids. it. No, they 2K influences, but they watch it. I, I say maybe they're they're more casual watchers. Yeah. Re not really breaking down the game with a set, so defensive sets yeah. or offensive sets. I know there's probably more of that, but no, they watch. Yeah. They watch. I like I just wish yeah. kids like competitive athletes. Yeah. No, nah, they do. That's what I wish. I wish somebody <laughs> looked at like Giannis and said, oh, I want to fuck with somebody like Giannis because he cares yeah. or he appears to care about winning. Mm. Anthony Edwards, I think he's a good example he's of great. being a competitor. Yeah. He's great. I think athletes who say, hey, I'm okay with being, you know, the second best, third best person when I have the ability to be the best, right. in my opinion, I, I just think it's weird. Right. All right. I'm not mad at that. That's it. I got no problem. <laughs> You, you said you caught the uh, Charlemagne Big Sean joint, right? Yeah, but I got to catch a train, so I wish you would have talked I, about I it a little bit earlier, goddamn it. You can talk time. about it if you want, but no, I got to go. No, we it's okay. We, we hit like 10 topics today. Alex, you did a great job with all the topics. Y'all did great. Y'all yeah. showed up. <laughs> you definitely Thank you. Y'all so. showed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great up. interview. Great. great. Y'all know, and it I'll, we'll recap it really we, quick. We can kind of, we can now, we can put it to the side, because this is really like a marriage talk. Yeah, we, yeah. I know we could get into it. No, let's do it. I'll take the next train. Let's go. No, 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 no. No, for real, let's go. I don't know. Let's do it. Even know if he's I'm dead ass. <laughs> yeah, we for the people. Let's, let's talk. talk about it. I'll take that. Yeah. I'll get home at today. 1 30 a.m., bro. Nah, nah, fuck that. We out it. Yo, let's do we're, it. We're tabling Yo, it. Yo, need to know no, fans. No, 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 it's me. We're tabling no, to really talk about this yeah. in the way that we, we want, want to. to. Like, I'll I want to take it. a long time. No, no, I want to so, take a long time. So let's long stroke this thing together. Me. I got work tomorrow, nigga. I'm a nine to fiver. We'll Sorry, see Dame you Dash. guys at, on August 17th. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, leaving the people. Sorry, Dame yes. Dash. Yeah. Yes. Yo. Savon doesn't know when to stop potting, and I love him for that, I love him for that. Yeah, and I love potting, too. Y'all know that. Yes. But nah, man. We really want to, you know. Just know I got y'all back in the comments. Let these niggas know that. That they ain't let, let them First know. shit you said, I got a train. <laughs> Fuck out of here, nigga. I, I have a heart out I at 10 15. Yeah, that nigga texted that shit in the group chat, right? <laughs> oh, just in case you guys need to know, I have a heart out at 10 15. So I said at 10 o'clock. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 we went over. So we went over. Because I'm for the people. We for the people. Let's keep going. Buy a ticket for August 17. For real. The big shows with Charlemagne, I was like, damn, twin. This has been the need to know podcast. No, for real, but you didn't see how they broke down the marriage talk? With the kid. Yeah, with the kid and all that. We'll get to it. I understand when you right. with a girl for mad long yeah. but don't want to marry her. This has been been I get you it when know. you got a wife but she's Who not really my wife. Don't forget to get your tickets for our <laughs> yeah. mixer coming very soon. And I August love when love don't really love come, like that. Come as, <laughs> coming August 17th. Uh -huh. uh, when the, the fake love be the real love. <laughs> make sure to sign up. For make our sure Patreon. To, make sure to sign up for our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash We wait. will talk about Big Sean and marriage over there. Thank yeah, you. No, for real, but did y'all see how Charlemagne was breaking that down? This has been great. We'll see you guys soon. That was a great interview. Yeah, and later, y'all. Gang!